Give us a video intro, Tom. Okay, welcome gamers to the third annual voting in the Game Awards, uh, even though I haven't played anything. But this time, I have other people, and I think collectively, we have all played, at least played, all of the Game of the Year nominees. Uh, without further I don't ado. Know if that's true. I think that's true, but we'll get there. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Let me introduce. We have Eli, you may know Hello. as Krogar Scar Veteran in the FF14 videos. We have Formerly Gavin. alive. <laughs> yeah. Well, hold on. That's a spoiler. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Now, Devin also in at least the first fourteen video. He's there. <laughs> His presence is known in in the Realm Reborn video. You could say hi. <laughs> and finally, we have Gabe, <laughs> who appeared in the thirteen video for a strange and brief moment. <laughs> the spotlight. Hello. And we're just gonna vote on the Game Awards. So let's get started. Is this going to be edited, or is this just going to be one long, uh, no. drawn <laughs> out? Thing, Tom, Tom, if you edit a single thing, I will cut your foot off. <laughs> we said we wouldn't start with the biggest one, but I think we should. The biggest category right okay. off the bat. Well, okay. Oh. Best esports event. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me TIs on here so I can shit on it. Thank God. The International? The International was so bad this year. It's the only one of these I actually know anything about. They, like, decided they were never going to do a Battle Pass again. And that was, like, what funded the International. So I think last year's prize pool was, like, $40 million. And this year's was, like, $2 million. Oh. Wait, but there's no Battle Pass. That kind of sounds good to me. <laughs> oh, I, I don't have anything to say there. Like, yeah, that's awesome. It's just like, oh, they probably could have, like, at least funded it like somehow <laughs> instead of just being like let's just offer like 20 times less money than last year yeah valve has the cash probably so okay are we trying to vote on what the best esports event was yeah what's the what was your favorite i know you watched them all i don't know what evo or blast tv paris major even are are they just like sets of different games evo is fighting games Eva's fighting him. Huh? Like Can we just vote ones. for Dota 2 because they got rid of the battle pass? <laughs> Eli said that was bad because it was a, <laughs> because it didn't I mean, make money. Look, every year I, I, I probably I just Eva. vote for the games I don't like, so like League of Legends is off. Okay. Oh, no, we lost Gabe. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm thinking Dota. Okay, I'm thinking... Okay, so HCS isn't on here, so that's... All right, so fuck them, but... Counter-Strike? No, Evo. Evo. Okay, I, no, I see, I was going to vote Evo, but that would split us on a tie. And I actually play Dota, so I guess we can vote Dota. Oh, we, oh, we can also switch Are we really voting, voting Dota? Dota? Yeah. I, was, <laughs> I think that seems reasonable. I was voting... I wait, wait, my vote was Evo. My vote was Evo. Okay. Oh, your vote was well, Evo. Oh, okay, then, yeah, we should now. definitely go Evo. What is Evo? I vote for it, but what is it? It's well, fighting, it's fighting games. games. Why would Tom vote for Dota? Evo I wanted but to vote for because like Nintendo... Uh, tried to like shut him down or something for playing Super Smash Bros. They were like, "You're playing our game? What the hell's wrong with you?" <laughs> I wanna, I wanna vote for Evo because they announced an update to Killer Instinct at Evo. So I vote for Evo because it sounds cool. Hell yeah! Dude. I vote for Evo because I like fighting games. It's Evo. Let's at least go. for like right, watching tournaments and stuff. Cool. All right. It's locked in. It's locked. Yay, That's gonna go win. Evo. Oh, this this website is, it, is always is the stream being we know, weird so. for anybody else. No, this, no, this website, like just the website is yeah. incredibly laggy every year. That is so <laughs> Alright, best esports code. Woo! Why are we still on esports? What's happening? The girl. The girl. Yeah, the girl. shouts well, out women in esports. Absolutely. Women yeah, in gaming. Like EG. Representation yeah. of the esports universe. Yeah, alright, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to vote for somebody who you can't pronounce their name. His name is... Oh, yeah. Nah, none of them. This, is, so this isn't just your screen being out. weird. The site is actually like this. It's oh, lagging, yeah, just as bad for me, yeah. This is so sad. Okay. Incredible. <laughs> Best esports Why are we team? still here? Why are we still here? They don't know any of these teams. Where Two is of them the are from Valorant? Gaming? Oh, goodness. Well, yeah, what's up with Valorant? Well, Gabe, I'm oh, sorry to say Valorant. Valorant. Let's do the Counter-Strike one. Let's do the Counter-Strike one. 
You guys like Counter Strike? Counter Strike, sure, yeah. Yeah, just for game. Let's get let's get this out for game. I <laughs> oh my bone. <laughs> <laughs> they could use a vote. Do you know do you know Team Vitality? No. Team Hoops. No. Alright, hopefully no more esports. Best esports athlete. Oh no. <laughs> no. What? This Faker. I know Faker is the famous League of Legends dude. Yeah, yeah. I remember Faker. I, I don't know anyone else on here, so I'd vote Faker. Well, <laughs> Zew is from. playing a dead game because CSGO is dead, so... Yeah, what? CSGO is oh, not oh, even yeah, a what? game. What a loser. <laughs> what a loser indeed. <laughs> I'm sure he's, he's out of a job. <laughs> Are we able to skip categories or no? Do we have to vote? No, let's no. just vote because we've also seen esports, so we know what we're talking about. I'm going to go for Lee Faker saying he, uh, that I want to vote for him. We like Faker? I don't know. He kind of seems like... You know, he's smug. You like he's, he's the best in the game. Everyone knows. No, but he has been for years, man. Like he's got to keep his title, you know? Okay, gotta, hold on. Gotta, I wanna, yeah, he's he's stayed on top, bro. Hang on, still hold on, hold on, hold on. What's up, Gabe? What's up, Gabe? What should I say? Fuck. Devin, you said we're not allowed to edit this? <laughs> Faker, right, then. Faker it is. Faker. <laughs> All right. Figure. Sure. You're gonna have to cut like a. <laughs> there's like one cut in the whole thing. He's like, I'm gonna say it, <laughs> and then it just cuts us to us being like, okay, so we can edit it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Best esports game. At least this is the actual oh, game. God. Why? An actual Wait, game why is PUBG know. Mobile yeah. the esports game? Is the esport really the mobile game? Oh no, my yeah. God. Is Wait, PUBG not so. a game outside of a phone anymore? Jeez. Well, no, but hold on. If it's PUBG Mobile, doesn't that mean it's... That is a different game? On the phone? Like, are they... What are they playing it on? The phone, yeah. phone. It's a mobile uh, game. That, so... Oh, a Steam Deck, uh, maybe? Uh, maybe? Oh, you're saying, Steam. like, if is there an esports, like, championship show where everyone's just on their iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> like, the people sitting in a chair just playing on their phone? Yeah, that sounds like it sucks. That does not sound great. Um, Damn, definitely I, not PUBG Mobile. No, <laughs> Counter Strike 2, I don't know. You didn't even like uh, Counter Strike 2. <laughs> well, I like it more than any of the other things. Damn. True. I, I play Dota 2. Does anyone else play anything else on this list? I played Counter Strike 2 once. Yeah, I got I got 100 percent of the achievements right. in Counter Strike. If more of us played, we all get 100 percent of the achievements in Counter Strike 2. Honestly, um, I thought Counter Strike 2 was a dope update. I don't get all the hate, but Counter Strike 2. Yeah, giving you another W. Another dub. We set up something where we can like veto game selections. Like if we get to a category, and it's like I don't care what it is, just not that game. Oh, like we all said... have one veto. We could do the whole for the whole thing. Yeah, like we like 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 if like if someone like if we haven't played any of the games and we feel strongly against a certain game, can we like veto <laughs> it? <laughs> sure, I guess <laughs> sure. So. He's just gonna come here and veto Baldur's Gate Three. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Who is this? Who are these? Where's Scott the Waz? All right, Loki. I'm gonna vote for Iron Mouse. Put me under that. Who the fuck VTuber. is that? Vtuber. Is that a Vtuber? Absolutely. Why is that the only Vtuber? I'm surprised there isn't more. I've well, seen actually... people make games, and they're like actual journalists who they did like a whole deep dive on Roblox doing child labor, labor and stuff. What? So that's my vote. Who did that? Oh, okay. They're oh, people, oh, people make games. Yeah. So my a real, a real shadow. All right, I'm oh, on, like, I'm real journalism. Iron well, hold on, hold on. I'm voting for Iron Man specifically because of her general story. Well, she is definitely a VTuber. Um, she actually is. Um, she's you know confined. Her. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she's confined to her bed. She actually has. Um, a, I forget specifically what the illness is, but she essentially can't leave her room. She can't really interact with people because um, if they're not thoroughly sanitized, she her weakened immune system will not be able to deal is with. It like, fibromyalgia. I think it, it. I'm not sure if it's that. Is it default it's, in our stars disease? I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that one. But I do know she's got like a respirator. She's got like a IV hook. Um, and you know she doesn't really leave her bed. She's trying to get through um, physical therapy essentially because she wants to get better so that she can go out and do stuff. Um, I know like I think a couple of years ago the doctor said that she only had five years left to live. So oh my that's God. part of the reason why I have a vote for Iron Mask because she's actually been plugging content out and she's a good job. I don't know people make games. So if you guys all want to vote for people make games, I'm not going to stop you. But my vote is going to be pretty heavily for Iron Mouse. So we're definitely hmm. no on no all opinion. these, like, Gen Z. I don't know, I don't know any except for I have is heard of Iron Mouse. the Mouse guy before. who's saying we are the champions? Who? Queen? Hold on. It would be, like, interesting if 
with all of the loading that this website did, they maybe had like a short blurb or like <laughs> anything. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Hold on. This is what Quackity. I know that Quackity made. We are the askers. We are the Nobody askers. Asked. Nobody asked. Nobody asked. What is this? You are so dumb. <laughs> Wait, Tom, you should play that. You should play uh, that in the stream, or you should play that for the video. <laughs> I am playing it. One cares about, but you I just. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess we got to vote for him then. No. <laughs> no. 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 Hold. We play it first. Wait. 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 Are you playing it in the video or not? Yeah, I'm 25 seconds in. <laughs> okay, well, I think I, well, I, think I get the bit. <laughs> so you're saying your vote's for Quackity, then? Is that it? No, is I'm that saying that's vote? what I know him from. I don't really care. Yeah. I don't Iron Mouse Quackity. takes it. Whoa. There he is. takes it. There we that's go. That's official. Let's go. These predictions will all happen at the awards. Oh, yeah. So we know it. What do we win? Sure. Steam Deck OLED. Oh, oh, fuck, oh yeah, fuck yeah, bro. Yeah. We gotta hope uh, we have another like eight, nine minute long speech like last time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll never work. forget uh, Jeff coming up and be like, try to give away a few more Steam yeah, Decks. The huh? This world is so much in the course of dreams and escapism and, and just <laughs> being better. Um. Great moment, Chris Judge. I think he was trying to give away a few extra Steam decks as well. All right. This is just a. Uh, this is just a. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Most right? hype. Yeah, Final Fantasy I'm, I'm very hyped about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I, I mean, I I'm not lie. particularly interest. I'm not particularly anticipating any of these, so I'll go with Rebirth also. I thought mm -hmm. you were, you loved like a dragon. I haven't even played it. I just like Yakuza Fridays. Okay. <laughs> I enjoyed like a dragon. Well, I would uh, I would vote Final Fantasy VII. I would definitely. Uh, I think that's it. Oh. Okay, there are a couple. Well, no, I All think. Right. It I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys, okay. let you guys speak first because I know what I'm going with. What are you going for? Oh, I'm gonna let you guys speak first because I I know what I'm. Going I for. haven't seen Castlevania Nocturne, but I absolutely loved the other Castlevanias that I saw. Mm. So like I have a Same. feeling that's probably really good. I did actually watch The Last of Us, and I enjoyed that quite a bit. Uh, but I didn't think it was like the best show either. Either Super Mario Bros. movie made like a fucking bajillion dollars. That's probably gonna win. That's probably gonna be Mario. I'm I'm voting really? for Mario Brothers movie. Let's go. Really? Oh Mario. It, okay. I gotta go Last uh, of Us, man. That was a, I'm going for Last of Us too. I'm that was a great that. adaptation. Uh, Added uh, to the, the game. Like, between, between Castlevania for me and The Last of Us, like I haven't yeah. actually seen that Castlevania. I don't know it's good, so I would vote Last of Us as well. Because that definitely was like I I watched it. It was solid. Okay, mm -hmm. Last of Us winning. Last of Us. Mm -hmm. What did we go with? Oh, we went with Last of Us. Fuck. Okay. I'm sorry. Wait, did you did you ever see it? Off of the Iceland. Did you ever see it? Yeah. It was good. I like right? one episode with. Uh, I like that one episode with the two dudes, but other than that, it was just okay. Fair yeah. enough. That's my... Ooh, Ooh, Ooh. Oh, Why is party animals here? Oh. Because it's oh, funny. Isn't, that... isn't Diablo 4? Animals... Oh, no. God, no, not Diablo 4. Get that out of here. I did play Diablo 4. No. Is Wonder Multiplayer? Is what? Is Wonder Multiplayer Super Mario Bros. Okay. Wonder? Yeah. I... This yeah. game, if you ever played Journey... Yeah. It was like hmm. Journey, but like an actual game. The online multiplayer is actually oh, that sounds cool. really cool. You have is to communicate like to people. Oh. Like non verbally. So you, you, you try to help somebody out. Like, you gotta go down the pipe. You gotta. And he, he comes oh. over and presses down and doesn't work. It's like, yeah, but no, but you gotta hey. wait and it goes down by itself. But how do you tell him that? And I'm just sitting here pressing the button over and over and he's not getting it. And eventually he comes <laughs> over and I see him go down and I'm like, yes. I saved that guy. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's like it's so like friendly cool. dark souls. Okay. Yes, it is. That's why I, it's my vote. For I sure. will say I feel like Mario Wonder is a good online multiplayer experience, but I played it a little bit local co op and I feel like it was a worse it wasn't um, a good local co op experience. I can't I feel say like it. the screen mm -hmm. the screen following just one player specifically like leads oh. to a lot of like weird 
like frustrations. I guess is it kind of like Lego Stars, Star Warsian, where like the camera like follows yeah. one person, and if the other person's off of the screen, they like get put into a corner. Or something? Oh, Lego Star Wars! I think you're fighting for control of the camera, isn't it? Doesn't it just oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. for this one? It's oh like, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's literally just like there's one there's one person who's a leader, and I don't know how that's decided, but then it's I don't know. I didn't, mm-hmm. I played a local co-op, and I was literally and I don't remember. I think the new Super Mario Bros. game had a more fun local co-op experience than this. Gotcha. One but the online stuff in Wonder is cool because you can kill people and stuff, and that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, think, yeah, exactly. I think Eli and I can attest to Baldur's Gate 3's co-op. Ballin. I, I think they did a like. For what the game is, which is an isometric classic RPG, actually fitting in multiplayer and having it work as well as it does is quite the achievement. I feel I, like the only thing holding it back is that they need you to be able to like switch who's talking when like a conversation happens. I don't know if that's Baldur's Gate 3 multiplayer as much as that's Baldur's Gate just in general, though. But I feel like it's worse in multiplayer. Oh, I could believe that. I could believe it. Like you, but still, granted, like I feel like they've done like about as well as you like possibly can with the the like style of game, and I think it's definitely very good. All I can say is so far, it would have my vote. Super Mario Bros. Wonder sounds cool, but Mm -hmm. Baldur's Gate Three is just an amazing game, and the fact that you can play through it with your friends and it works as well as it does is yeah. I mean, all I can say is I'm having a fantastic time doing an evil run with Eli right about now. We've slaughtered so (laughs) many people, and I. Oh, because like it's good, it's like a good mixture of like tactics and strategy, and and we uh, we could go entirely separate ways, and the game still works. Like I could go in an entirely that's different dope. like world area than Devin, and it's like you know the same like shit's still happening in real time to both of us. It's fucking true. I, I just ah, oh, all right. I just, I I love that game so much, just in general. I will absolutely gush about it. But I think my vote is for Baldur's Gate Three. Yes, I think you'll have. Plenty more I, opportunities to gush about because it's got an nomination. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll say I'm okay with Baldur's Gate three taking this just because it's such a big game and the fact that they're yeah. even letting you do co-op multiplayer both locally and online. Mm-hmm. Like, like I keep saying, oh, people complain that Halo doesn't have split screen, but what other games do have split screen? It's like, oh, well, Baldur's Gate three does. So it's Ball like, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> so I can concede. I'm kind of going with Baldur's Gate. I can concede yeah. Baldur's Gate. That's I also haven't yeah, beaten yeah. Wonder yet, so it's like I still need to play more of it. But I think the, the multiplayer for Wonder actually does sound really cool, though. I do like the idea of friendly Dark Souls, where instead of the ghost yeah. wandering around and you see someone die, you're like, oh, this ghost is trying to help yeah. me. That's lovely. And also, like... I specifically remember, I wanted to mention, like there being a whole story about uh, Xbox having to break like their parody agreement between the Series S and X because they were like, we can't get like the split screen working on the S and since you're like we can't release a game on either console unless it works on both with like full feature parity or whatever they just weren't going to release on Xbox instead of dropping split screen and then <laughs> apparently Xbox like capitulated they're like yeah you can have co-op on the series X and not on the series S well it'll be online co-op on the series S it just won't have split screen right right yeah no it's still there and available but yeah just the fact that like they also, were, I heard it. Would, I heard it not so much Xbox than drop anywhere. the split screen co-op because it does matter. And Halo dropping it is so awful. It's kind of it matters. You, who are you gonna it, play with, Eli? Your fucking cat? Like, come on, my but, friends. I have them. These two. You know, you know, I swear. I have been fighting Joel, about Halo split screen Joel, co-op for years. <laughs> And it will never have it. With your pals going through Blood Gulch, and like you're all sitting what on a pals? couch. Like, We're all here. We're all fucking here. <laughs> you live a million miles away. Like, what the fuck? Hey, where are your friends? <laughs> Not around me. <laughs> same. <laughs> same. What can I say? <laughs> going. What's the next? What's the next category? Next fuck. one. Next <laughs> one. <laughs> Best sports. Uh, <laughs> I think Gabe's the only um, one who probably... I heard oh, the new Motor Fest is actually have, pretty good, I, have and I haven't played any of the other games. I have a very specific veto. Oh. I'm going to put my veto right here. I'm vetoing EA Sports FC 24. Just because oh, EA God. sucks? Why? Uh, partly because EA sucks, but also partly one of the things that EA has been doing with their sports titles is they've been releasing them annually, which means a couple of things. A quality control's gone out of the window, essentially. There's no quality control. B, the people working on the game are overworked. They're working long hours to essentially shovel something out on a yearly annual basis. 
three, it's like full priced and almost like you know we're talking like seventy, eighty dollars for the game itself. So I, I hate it. I hate it on principle, even though I've not played it. Just the 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 very existence yeah. of it makes me unhappy. I don't think you had. I'm totally cool with that veto. Dude. I yeah. was not gonna vote for that game think at all. That was a necessary veto because everything. Oh. I think everyone's on your side there. But... That's lovely. Yeah, I vote Hot Wheels because yeah, I played one of those yeah. once and it was really fun. Hot and the fact yeah, they're making like a whole thing about it is dope. Damn, let's do Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels is nostalgia. That's my childhood. I was a young man when I looked at the car and I was like, it can go vroom and it could go vroom. That's why I'm voting. Yeah, for Hot and that Wheels. kind of blew my mind. Truly. Why is sports and racing not separate categories, though? I don't know. I don't know if they have enough. Like what? Because yeah, then it would just be like all the EA games. It'd be EA basketball, EA soccer, EA golf. Right. Hey guys, we could do something really funny here, and I'll vote for Fire Emblem. <laughs> would that be funny? I don't know. If that'd be funny. It would. Be would that be funny? funny? <laughs> what would it be funny? I don't understand. <laughs> Best Part of me wants to vote Advance Wars because I'm pretty sure they delayed that game due to the invasion in Ukraine. Oh, and it's like a that's year, a classy yeah. move. <laughs> that's a classy also, move the art direction is worse than the originals though hot take in hot take advanced wars one and two yeah as bad i as thought it, it looked pretty take. cool i thought for it didn't look like anything special like i i'm pretty sure i played advanced wars one and it was Wait, is the been... answer not pikmin like I, I yeah i mean it's, pikmin, right? yeah, I it's yeah, absolutely yeah, pikmin. Not go for pikmin yeah i was about to say i, I thought someone here played pikmin and is pikmin it any four, good pikmin 4 is fantastic okay I'm it doesn't matter uncle ben pikmin 4 is better than both of them <laughs> oh, were you looking to vote for Advanced Wars? No. Oh, I would. I would have. I never played Pikmin Four, but oh. if everyone says it's fantastic, they're like, yeah. Pikmin no, 4. no, it was Devin's I'm... favorite game of the year. So it's my game of the year. Yeah. Oh come on, <laughs> we got best family game again family. with this crap, man. Does that mean that everyone in this game are related by blood? <laughs> yeah, best game where the people in it are related. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, okay, I will say it did sound like Super Mario Bros. Wonder was cool, and I don't think we gave it the vote on the last one. Unless you think Pikmin 4 is better. I just said that I think the local multiplayer isn't as good as, like, the older games. That's true, so family-wise. Actually, Mm. a guy at work today, I was telling him I beat Mario Wonder, and he was like, so did I. I helped my kid play, beat the last level. So that's that's family right there, man. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm. Well, I mean, he didn't mention how he helped his kid beat Sonic Superstars. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't mention that one. <laughs> Sonic who? <laughs> Let's be real. Sonic Superstars is not a family game. Okay, that's definitely like PG thirteen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he says "damn" in that. So that's that's not very family that's no friendly. Good. That's no good. Is Pikmin Four multiplayer? I think there's a multiplayer. Uh, mode. Two player. Yeah. Oh, so it is multiplayer. Also, families can't really... They, they don't want to manage it's true. I, I feel like if a dad was looking at Pikmin and if a dad was looking at Super Mario Brothers, he'd be like, oh, it's Mario. I know who that is. And then with Pikmin, he's like, what the fuck am I looking for? <laughs> what you know is what that saying? noseless dog? Yeah. What is the fucking thing? What is this? So I think just in terms of like, if I were a parent and I were really old and I wasn't following up with the video games, I would recognize Mario. I wouldn't recognize Pikmin. Soup mom it is. Soup mom. Plus he's a mom, so... Best fighting game. Sifu? Uh, uh, from everything I've heard, Street Fighter Six, but I love Mortal Kombat 1. I've got like 100 hours in that game. Yeah, okay. you're still right. going hard at that. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Don't... I was just playing it earlier today, man. The Omni Man <laughs> came out. Okay. I'm a big fan of Invincible. Uh, so, wait, what are we leaning on this one? I think Mortal Kombat 1 seems to be the game. He likes Mortal That's Kombat. That's not for me. <laughs> I think Street Fighter Six okay, is supposed to be a better game, but I would vote for Mortal Kombat 1. He's got counterpoint. a counterpoint. Nickelodeon All Star Brawls 2 has uh, Jimmy Neutron in it, so. Okay. Oh my god, you can brain blast in that game? Hmm. You can blast people's yeah. brains? You can blast. Hmm. <laughs> well, what about God of Rock? <laughs> what about it? Oh, Tom, what about oh, the, guy, of the guy has cool hair. <laughs> Tell us more, Tom. Tell us more. I think you fight with guitars and Sorry, stuff. <laughs> People generally isn't Mortal Kombat one plagued with Warner Brothers traditional like very heavy monetization bullshit. They definitely have microtransactions, but they are also like, definitely it, like, not very necessary. aggressive. I think Street I mean Fighter they're really expensive, does, but uh, like a skin in Mortal Kombat is ten dollars. The skin in Halo is thirty. So oh. you know I don't know what what's <laughs> oh, bad anymore, dude. 
Hold on. Oh, is ten dollars that bad anymore? I I think it is. Halo's I didn't free. spend ten dollars on any skins, but actually, come to think of it, Eli, how's the story of Mortal Kombat one? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, I loved it, man. There are so many. Uh, like, it's a lot of fun. It's super campy, but like yeah. they usually are. But it, like in the best way. They got rid of like the quick time events, so you get to like just watch the movie when you're just watching the movie. That's lovely. Um, <laughs> There's so many like amazing like screen grabs and like fun points in the story and all oh. together like I thought it was a blast. I thought yeah. it was really good, but not yeah, a brain blast. Good. Not a brain blast. They didn't even put Jimmy on the cover, nope, man. So I don't know. Yeah, they put a fucking so they... on the cover, but they didn't put <laughs> they didn't put yeah. Jimmy Neutron on the cover. They got Chris Pratt. Okay, I, honestly, I don't lean one way or another. Oh yeah, Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Pratt. Why is Chris Pratt so fucking huge? Why is he why, way bigger than everyone else? Why is Chris Pratt... I don't know, so weird, yeah. Why do you uh, make Chris Pratt small, diminutive character cartoon people? I can never look at Garfield and say, that man is Chris Pratt. What the fuck? He's a... yeah, Garfield and Mario are not Chris Pratt. Not Chris Pratt. <laughs> what the fuck? Just Mortal Kombat? I think so. That's I my vote for sure. I, I haven't played any of these, so I honestly I don't have any stake in this. Yeah, Even well, if I'm... you're not a fighting game fan, you can enjoy the fatalities and like the, oh, yeah. that shit out of Mortal Kombat, right? Like but people love Street watching Fighter just the, also the like stuff. pretty good for newcomers. Not oh, I heard it was like a far now. better game. Yeah, it's like people <laughs> love Street Fighter I'm... Six. Yeah, I'm just I'm not the biggest fan. Oh, wait, of so you Kombat. heard Street Fighter Six is better, and we're going to Mortal Kombat? <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan. Because of it. I, I, in my opinion, Mortal Kombat's like better, but like Street Fighter Six, they just have like more features and stuff, you know? Right. I mean, I I, I think I'm still sticking with Mortal Kombat because I don't like Street Fighter just in general as a series. Not that not nothing against like anybody creating the game or the game itself. It's just not my thing. Like I would mm-hmm. vote for Mortal Kombat one, especially because they put Omni Man and Homelander in. Com- yeah, one, which is already- Mortal Kombat One is a super fun crossover that, characters. I, yeah, I feel the- like Mortal Kombat One is exhausting their cool crossover characters, and they're like reaching bottom of the barrel now. They're, like honestly, like I don't know, not, dude, I love Omni Man. Omni Man yeah. are so fucking okay, cool. but like I, I like fun. they they peaked the crossover characters of MKX, and it's like now they're kind of just like With all Al- okay, you guys. can't beat the Xenomorph alien. Like yeah, that shit was dope. Okay, <laughs> that's gonna, but that's gonna, yeah, yeah. So I still have hopes. Like, like, Ghost like, oh. Killer is gonna make it into this one from the Scream franchise <laughs> and just be like a like a dude with a knife just stabbing the shit out of people. Dory mode. Most fighting games don't. Oh, get Starfield out of here. I'm vetoing Starfield. If this is my actual veto, <laughs> oh, I'm very, This is the only category Starfield's <laughs> nominated. It's, wait, hold on. Is the P's an RPG? What the fuck? Life Dude, I was excited for Starfield. Like. I, I bought the like collector's edition or whatever so I could play it early because I was in a like a four-day weekend off work. Right. Just happened into it, but I was like, uh-huh. okay, well, I'll do this. I have not even beaten the game. It is It is bad. Oh, wow. It's oh. not a good game. Every other Bethesda, Bethesda game isn't... is better than Starfield. Oh, I've never heard wow. you call it you the B word before. <laughs> just straight out bad. I, I like. Yeah, it just, is that accurate? like it, my I interest just waned players. and waned and waned to the point that like it's been sitting in my library unfinished for like a month and a half at this point. I still have zero desire to continue it. I was like, what? you know what? No, I can't. I can't say it's. A, I can't say it's a good game. From what I know about Starfield, it's the biggest problem that it has is it's it's very large, but they don't compensate for that. So like yeah. exploration, which is the biggest thing in Bethesda games, it, it doesn't really exist. If you want to explore, you either have to go to a city where there are all whole, gonna just be a bunch of loading screens, or if you're going from one planet to another planet, you've got to sit through multiple cutscenes and multiple like loading screens just to get to the planet. And then when you get on the planet, there's like a space base in the distance that you have to take five minutes to walk to with like completely barren planet stuff there's nothing on the planet and you get there it's usually not even that bro it's usually a pile of blocks and you like scan it and it says like gravitational anomaly researched or whatever and it gives you like one out of like 40 (laughs) and like the fucking sector or some shit it's like okay oh my god yeah like five xp and then you gotta walk all the way back that's bad (laughs) yeah so, yeah, Starfield, we're not going to do that. I'm going to go vote for Baldur's Gate again. Has anybody, because it's here, has anybody played Final Fantasy 16 yet or no? I have, yes. 
Yeah, is that's it, true. I heard it's like it, I've heard it's lacking in the RPG element. So is it even worth talking about right now, or is it later? It's. I mean, it's it's a fun story, but yeah, you don't get nearly as much. I, I don't think I feel like you don't get nearly as much freedom, even that you would get in like fifteen. And I despise fifteen, but I do like sixteen. I just think that you role play more in fifteen than you do in sixteen. Wow. Okay. I have no thoughts on sixteen. <laughs> I've only so, played the first fifteen. Now, I also actually <laughs> had the pleasure of playing Lies of P as well. And then yeah, it's also technically it. a role-play game. And you've not, you've not beaten it yet. That's gotcha. what the P in RPG is. Yeah, Lies of... I know Thomas played Sea of Stars as well, and it, he was, like, big on it. How, sea how of is Stars? You play Sea of Stars, Tom? Kicks ass. That's an amazing game. I think it's that might be my game of the year. Really? Are you willing wow. to hold it? Are you willing to have it fight up against Baldur's Gate three? Because I'll 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 vote for Sea of Stars if you want if you want to take that battle and defend it. <laughs> I'm pretty firmly on Baldur's Gate though. I hate to break it to you. I'm, 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 I'm sure there. Eli have to say Gate, that, like, yes. I don't think either I or Devin have played Sea of Stars. I heard Sea of Stars was very good. However, I played Baldur's Gate three, and I think it's one of the best games ever made. So I, 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 I'll, I'll back come up. I'll back come up on Sea of Stars. It means we... Well, I I think Baldur's Gate will win this category. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Star, what, what is Sea of Stars about? I'm kind of so, curious. Yeah. It's like a Chrono Trigger Super Nintendo RPG inspired, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. with like. You ever played a Mo Super Mario RPG? one of those uh, <laughs> not, I, I, I've not done that actually. it has the things where like when enemies actively attack you you can block it by timing the button there's like elements where you have to you get, like, the the better attack if you time your attack as well right 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 you oh, can break nice, enemies yeah. they'll tell you like in two turns i'm gonna do this big attack unless you use these all these elements on me and you have to like figure out like it's every battle is like a puzzle Oh. which is really neat the story's like emotional and cool and the world's awesome oh. and the music is amazing oh. and it's tied into the messenger which is a really awesome indie rp or er, platformer that came out years ago oh. okay it's just awesome. the cyber shadow that sounds lovely i also That's know wrong. from what you've described it totally does not sound like my kind of game nah <laughs> I'm sorry. It sounds like it's really, really cool. But yeah, I, I think I know. I think I actually kind of know the combat that you're talking about. And unfortunately, I've tried that kind of combat before, and it makes me want yeah, to. Yeah. Why is it Mario RPG nominated? Oh, you wait, don't like it's not turn based, and you don't like fucking... anything with rhythm. So that makes well, sense. Yes. Well, here's the thing. I'm fine with turn based if it if it's done well. Persona Five did turn based really, really well. Baldur's Gate Three does turn based extremely well. Um, but like, I... it's rhythm shenanigans. I think that I don't like. No, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say you didn't like 10's turn-based, which did that really I did well. not like 10's turn-based. So I kind but... of don't agree with that. Oh, you don't agree with the fact that I don't do like turn-based or don't like turn-based? No, I'm just thinking, uh, I don't I don't know. Final Fantasy is really good. You know? <laughs> it's one, no, I think it's one of the best turn-based games. <laughs> Everyone says that Final Fantasy X is the best Final Fantasy, and I just I I Did don't. Final Fantasy X not have an ATB thing? No, it's totally turn based. Not it's totally shit. turn based. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like Final Fantasy. I don't like that way better than ATB, man. <laughs> I I know this. We've got a whole bunch of Final Fantasy X lovers in the chat. That's not me. That, that ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not, right, where, where are we leaning? Well, it's tied. Well, we got we got two for three and two, or two for Baldur's Gate three and two for Sea of Stars, right? And Gabe How we is only is only kind of backing me up. Hasn't actually Tom. Played, so I don't know. How yeah, but do. Tom's also the host. <laughs> I don't know Sea of Stars. I feel Tom, like it's Tom, the Tom, underdog. Tom, Tom, Tom. I have an idea. I have an idea. What if I fly out to you and we fist fight each other? I feel like if we're being honest and fair, we all think it's gonna be Baldur's Gate. Fair. Hmm. I gotta say, I mean, what? Uh, okay, I, I'm actually kind of curious. What, what would you say is the replay value of Sea of Stars? Oh, it, Ooh, I mean, that's it, a good question. It don't got the replay value of Baldur's Gate. Like, I don't yeah, think anything's gonna zero. match that. Yeah. God. Does it have co-op either? It doesn't have co-op. It has new game plus. Is it where fully you can... voiced? No, but I wouldn't want it to be. It's not fully be. voiced. <laughs> I wouldn't I mean, want that. I think I think okay, so I I don't want to because Sea of Stars sounds like it's a really fantastic game, and it sounds like it's like it sounds like you had a really fantastic time playing it, and I I think that's fantastic and wonderful. 
I do think because of what Baldur's Gate does, the fact that you can play it multiple times and get a different story based on how you play it is the epitome of RPG, right? Yeah, it is the RPG. I can't deny Yeah, okay, it. let's just yeah, let's go with Baldur's Gate 3. I don't know why we're... <laughs> it balls. <laughs> It's ball and I, I, It is, it is the RPG of our. Right. It's the RPG. I'm sorry, guys. Dice rolling RPG. Yeah, you even <laughs> straight up dice roll. That's true. Best, Best ass... action adventure. Oh, Legend of Zelda. I've only played Spider Man and I've, I'm not, haven't beaten it yet. Is it any good? I don't. It's just as good as the first one, which is just okay. So oh, I'm no. gonna assume that almost. I'm gonna assume that all of these games are better than it. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> well, because Resident Evil Four is one of the best games ever, and I haven't played the remake, so I'm sure the remake is also like one of the best games ever. People have been saying it's really uh, good. I heard Jedi Survivor was pretty amazing. Zelda is another Zelda game, and Alan Wake Two is like one of so the best games ever. All right, let's let's yeah. go down the line. For me. Here it's Alan Wake too. I've I've only played out of these uh, Alan Wake and Resident Evil Four, but I think Alan Wake Two is miles above Resident Evil Four. And I, I played Spider Man One. I think it's way better than Spider Man One. Spider Man Two doesn't look like it's much better than One. Uh, I did. I actually did play a little bit of uh, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. And while it was a good game, I think Alan Wake, just like the the story of it, is just, you know, blows it out of the water. For me, it's just Alan Wake 2 here. I actually am going to put my bag pretty heavily on Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Have you played oh, it? nice. Have you played I've it? Actually, yeah. I actually, yeah, so, okay, so I played Alan Wake 2, so I cannot, I cannot attest to how good it is. I mean, it sounds like it's really good, and based on the way that you've described it, it does sound really, really neat. Um, I have actually played Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I think it's almost like it took what the first game did and made it infinitely better. The world is genuinely humongous. Like, we're talking, like, there are three different levels to the open world, and they are the exact same size, and the open world is just humongous. Further still, the combat is actually really, really... not sure how far you got into uh, the game for Legend of Zelda, Eli, but... The, the sheer idea of combat has gotten a really big overhaul in Tears of the Kingdom. Like, you have this combined ability that allows you to combine two random objects into a weapon. So, if you feel, if you're feeling frisky, you can, like, take a sword and you can combine it with, like, a minecart and you can get, like, a minecart hammer and just wander around and smack people with that thing. Further still, you can do crazy shit like putting a spear on, like, a spear and then you'll just have like a spear spear which is an extremely long completely <laughs> not nearly as good weapon but it's just so fun to use um and the weapon crafting systems i think was really really fun i'm a fan of i, I like the way that they did the story for um choose of the kingdom as well where it's very sporadic and you learn stuff as you go through the world it's definitely not like you know a very mature story i guess is the best way to put it like it's it's you know a zelda story but it's still pretty good for what it is i think um, and I think ultimately, in terms of just the way that the action feels, I do like how Tears of the Kingdom plays. I have not played any of the other, other games, so this is just the only input that I have. You didn't play Resi 4? I did not. It's something that I have on my list of wanting to do, but, you know. I played the original hmm. Resident Evil 4, does that count? Like, Nope. I've never heard Devin talk such a way about a Nintendo game. I didn't even know you He's played it. All I can say is I have considered getting a Nintendo Switch because of that game. Yeah, which is definitely like sounds cool. The I mean, like the the technical achievement of like what what they managed to like make work relatively bug free. I remember being talked about a lot, right. and it, it it does sound pretty incredible. Now, I mean, that yeah, being said, for me though, it's like like mm -hmm. it's. It's a huge game, and it's mm -hmm. like a like probably like a really great slow burn for like like hundreds of hours or something like that, right? Whereas right. like Alan Wake Two is like very much just like a here's the experience, you know, go do it. And is well, it, like it is like a lot pace? more linear. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to say it's like fast paced, but like it is like a linear game where you like you go through it versus like an open world game. Gotcha, gotcha. And, I don't know. Maybe it's just like open world game fatigue or like something, something <laughs> along those lines that just like. Oh yeah, I feel mm -hmm. that. 
the the that. story and like the way the story is told in Alan Wake Two is is so novel and unique to that game, mm, mm. Um, and like just kind of remedy as a studio the way they like do that stuff. And it's just course, like yeah. you know a Zelda story, and I've played a lot of Zelda games, and otherwise <laughs> it's like a fun open world game where you can do all kinds of like interactive stuff mm-hmm. versus like probably the best horror game i've ever played with like a fantastic <laughs> story and all of this like weird uh like video game odd stuff like adding in the fmv mm-hmm. having these like crazy off the wall purely artistic decision like cutscenes and stuff that like i i would love to talk about but are like almost certainly spoilers i agree with basically everything Devin said about zelda except that the sky is not as big as the others and also the underground part is as big but there's kind of nothing in it well what do you mean there's nothing in it there's kind of like more bosses that roam there's Mm -hmm. there's the yiga clans places where you just kill a bunch of yiga guys and then get the chest which always has like 50 of those jewel things Oh, so nice. Let's go. Okay, so here's my thought. I think I understand what you're talking about here. I think the Underdark in uh, Legend of Zelda is perhaps not story relevant, not nearly as story relevant. Like, you, I guess you go in there eventually for the story. But, like, if you're just trying to get the story of Legend of Zelda, you want to mostly stay on, like, the ground, honestly. <laughs> the sky, you are right. It, it's definitely the sky has, like, floating elements, but it's not as large as, say, the ground area. Then again, I do think that it's a neat thing that you can just make a fighter jet in Legend of Zelda and fly that shit around. That's pretty base. Oh yeah, I mean that's like the coolest thing you can do. That is so that's fucking like the neat. best. The best part of the game you describe the fusing and then the building of literally anything you want and the fact that you can literally just jump through the ceiling. Like you cannot I... do that in any game ever. Right. And they just did <laughs> like, that. They were like, "Hey, do you know how to no clip? Like, you know, no clipping is a thing. We're gonna give that to you as a fucking." Yeah. I think we're we're talking about action adventure, mm-hmm. and I feel like Tears of the Kingdom yeah. is adventure more than any of these other games. Like does Alan Wake have good traversal? <laughs> I, I I like really love the environments. I don't know about like like you do kind of just walk through them. <laughs> Sounds like Zelda's yeah. taking yeah. it. But still though, we'll keep an eye out for Alan Wake too for the next ca- categories. We were yeah, I mean, for a long time. I'm sure it's a big category, but I'm sure there's like narrator. Yeah, well, it had three Alan game Wager of the year contenders against. in there, didn't they? With uh, actually four game yeah, of the year. Of the only one that, that came into yeah. this category was yeah. Right. And then they have best That's action. I hate that action adventure. Uh, action. Yeah, that does I'm not going, make I'm going high fire rush. This I'm going high fire rush. That's uh, yeah. Okay. I haven't played Armor Core, but. I actually Armored Core is pretty fun. I do like it. I don't well, I like it, but I guess I don't like it nearly as much as some of the other FromSoft games that I've played. I don't know if it's really Armored Core Six looked cool to me, yeah, but I, I heard really good game. things about Remnant Two and I actually liked Remnant One and I was I was pretty keen on buying Remnant Two if I didn't have to buy like fucking eighty other games this year. Yeah. I probably would have. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had access to Sci-Fi Rush and I just didn't play it because honestly, it didn't. It's just not my style of game. Mm-hmm. I am gonna play Hi-Fi Rush because it looks you really are? cool. Okay. And it appeals to me way more than I know all of these other games just by looking at this key art. That mm-hmm. I would play them for five minutes and be like, eh. <laughs> but I know Hi-Fi Rush is like a beat 'em up rhythm game, and that sounds that's awesome. The beat 'em up that's rhythm totally platformer. Platformer, like... yeah. Yeah, that's totally that's totally your guys. That's speed, my eh? shiz. I mean, as it stands, I've played Remnant One, and it was okay. I think it definitely wasn't what I was hoping it was going to be. So Remnant Two, I'm neutral about. I've also not played that one yet, so I have no nothing to say about that one. I have played Armored Core Six, Pfizer Rubicon, and that's it's fine. But you know, I. I've played better Souls title games. Dead Island 2, I have no concept of, nor do I have any concept of Ghost Runners 2. So if we want to give it a Hyper Rush, I'm down to give it a Hyper Rush. I'd vote Remnant 2, but <laughs> if we got three for Hi Fi Rush, then. Hi Fi Sounds like it takes it. Hi Fidelity Rush. Island. 
What does Ghost Runner do? It's a guy with a sword, and he has a little... Never heard of that one. (laughs) Best (laughs) VR AR. I'm actually, you know, funnily enough, I am extremely qualified to answer this question. All right. Nice. (laughs) I wish I had played most of these, but... Well, actually, I'd say that I'm extremely qualified, but I've never played any of these (laughs) before. Why did you say that? I didn't even realize that Resident Evil Village had a VR mode. I didn't either. That's pretty incredible. That is actually. Kind I of mean, I know Seven had it, and uh, like I, I couldn't, I could not. <laughs> <laughs> I love horror games, but holy shit! Well, that's uh, the thing so about the VR, fact right? that did it for Eight sounds like, you know, Eight's kind of like less spooky than Seven. Like we were just talking about this earlier. Like maybe I could play Eight. Well, okay. No, here, here's the problem. Here's I mean, the dude, problem. Look at that. POV. As someone who is, as someone who <laughs> is an expert at VR, if you are in the experience, it's so much different. Even something that seems not nearly as scary on the outside, the oh, moment yeah, yeah, that yeah. your peripheral oh, vision is oh, taken away and you are stuck in there, and the worst thing about VR, especially VR horror games, is they get rid of your arms. Now, <laughs> on the surface, that doesn't mean anything, but if you see something horrifying yeah. and then you try to you cover can't, your You face, can't put your hands up. You yeah. can't put your hands in front of your uh, face, yeah. so you just see everything happen to you. I have played Resident nah. Evil Village regular mode, and that was a pretty fun game, so I'm going to go for well, Resident Evil Village. for Village out of, like, by default. Yeah, I'm I don't know if humanity yeah. looked really cool. Actually, that. you know what? Actually, no, I'm going to veto Village. I want to use my veto oh. on Village because I, I oh. want to like vote for a VR game that is not just an adaptation again. That's fair. Like an actual I, VR I, game I should support, win best full, VR game. Full support of that veto. Full support of that veto. I, I agree with I'm, that. I'm good with humanity then. Oh, isn't humanity the one where you're a god? Wait, I take it back. I have heard of humanity. That actually does seem like There's like a, really like a crowd one. of people and you have to move them or something. I really want to play it, but isn't yeah. it like VR, you... PSVR 2 exclusive or something? Oh, uh, is that a problem? Uh, fuck. Okay, well, fuck. I don't know what to tell you then. PSVR 2 would... can't even play Half-Life Alex. I will uh... say humanity. That that does look cool. It seems cool. It cool. I wish I... VR was not as segmented as it is. I know. It, well, it should not really be shame. at this stage of VR, but... There's a lot of VR games that I've like, I feel like are really really good, but yeah, I don't see them here. So I guess like so many games. that I would love to play are like either PS exclusive or Oculus, Oculus exclusive. Yeah. I think is the yeah. other one. really rough one. It's like oh yeah, it's not great. You get the state of the art one, but then all the exclusives are on the other one. The That's the really like awesome. shitty mass produced ones. Yeah. Like oh, come it's on. there, and you know I guess the, the it'd be one thing if like you know like. Yeah, if they're like, you know, these are like toned down games, but you like if you have higher rig, you can play them anyway. It's like, no, it's just, yeah, you just can't. Just, you just can't. Just, I just can't. So right. I'll go for, I'll, yeah, I'll you level you as well. Yeah. I do want to try that if possible. Oh, Best oh, game playable oh. on a mobile device. This I'm won't mean anything to anyone except for us, but Christian plays Monster Hunter now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the it Pokemon me Go? The thing. Tell it's no, Pokemon Go that. with Monster Hunter, but he said it has actual fighting mechanics that, like, oh you have God. to, like, you have to somewhat type? pay attention to. I'm also going to vote for this game as well for a friend of mine who you guys don't know, but who totally deserves to have Monster Hunter now be the best mobile game. So this is for you, Bucko. Okay. <laughs> All right. I guess we, oh, we got two votes. For Outer Parties now. talking Monster Hunter now. Uh, I'll say... Uh, Final Fantasy VII Ever, Ever Crisis is a gotcha oh. nightmare Fuck that game. I've, oh, I've played... Oh, is this the one you did the review for already? No, 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 because this just came out. This is the most recent one. Okay. I've put a hundred something hours into it. It sucks. It's a game that plays itself. hundred oh, hours? Go die. Kill yourself. Final Fantasy Seven. Hours. Okay. We're voting Monster Hunter now? Wait, I saw you spent a hundred hours on a gotcha game? How? <laughs> because um, does it have actual content? No, like... it doesn't have content. Oh. What are you crazy? What are you? Oh, God. Wait, hold on, oh. Tom, I got I gotta hear this. What would you say is the worst part of Final? Look, not the worst part, not the worst like section of the game. What, in your opinion, of the hundred hours that you've played, was your absolute worst time in the game? Like, what was the one thing where you remember and you were like, "Oh my God, this one particular point in time when I'm playing this game is the worst <laughs> point of time that I've had playing this." game. Can you tell me that? I'm just curious. I think. It was when I was on autopilot, because you literally just, mm-hmm. like, you tap a thing, and then you leave it for the five minutes, and then you go back and you tap a thing. 
Right. I was mm-hmm. basically the game is a list of different grind missions. You choose this oh. grind mission if you want to get materials for your weapons. You do this grind mission if you want that that that. So mm-hmm. one of the grind missions was is for experience points to level up your characters. Mm-hmm. And I mindlessly grinded to get max level for like Cloud. Mm-hmm. And then I was I wanted to get it for Aerith because you got to get to level 50 to unlock this so you can get that and actually oh, manage to be, yeah. you know, you know that crap. Right. And for like a half hour, I grinded with Cloud and all of my max level characters on the XP missions and wasted like a bunch of time and stamina <laughs> just oh, no. grinding XP for my max level characters. And I'm like, I'm so brain dead playing this game that I did not even realize it. It was oh. just, Ouch. it makes you feel bad to play it. It's like every gotcha um, game. It's just every gotcha <laughs> game is like that. It's, just they, it, yeah. so it's nominated for best mobile game because Final Fantasy Seven is a recognizable thing. That's it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm okay. voting for Monster right. Hunter. Monster Hunter. I, Monster Hunter yeah. it is for me. Yeah. Monster Hunter it is. I'm so sorry that you had to suffer through Final Fantasy Seven Ever Crisis. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry you have to play multiple gacha games. <laughs> <in Final laughs> I'm sorry that you. I was like, I just watched a review of a fucking horrible. Oh yeah. gosh! I'm yeah. so sorry that you have like to do ex boost Neo Plus or yeah. something. Here, <laughs> I was like, oh god. Uh, Here we go, indie games. games. Indie games. I mean, I know them except Venba. No, I, I know Venba. I don't know. Uh, I only know Pizza Tower, but Pizza Tower looked amazing. Pizza Tower looks dope. Uh, Cocoon is made by somebody from the Play Dead team. Wasn't mm-hmm. it made by someone from Play Dead or no? I don't know. I vote I'm Pizza I'm Tower. For Pizza I think... Tower, because <laughs> I really want to play Pizza Tower. Me too. I do like I do like how Pizza Tower looks. I like the the cover art, so I'll vote for Pizza Tower too. Pizza Tower is gonna win it. I mean, Viewfinder was cool. You know that one, right? Where you take the picture, yeah, and then you put the picture, and it makes a level. Oh, that one Ooh. did look super cool. But I, honestly, I'd still vote Pizza Tower. Yeah, same. <laughs> Cocoon, I gotta give respect to Coon because it's like really mind bending stuff, but Pizza Tower is just gonna win it. Like, it's, it's Pizza just, Tower. Like, it's Pizza Tower, and it's made by Tour de Pizza. That guy's been working on that Tour game for a very Pizza. long time. I've been following that <laughs> development, and I still didn't get the game when it came out and feel bad. So, That's it's fair. on my list. I'm <laughs> gonna play. On Steam, right? Oops. Yeah. It came out in January, okay. but you know I was playing Final Fantasy. Like, when's it gonna come to console? Like, he said not for a long time. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that poor man, he's really working his ass off. Best, Best indie, indie game. game that isn't a debut indie game, except Cocoon is and Dredge is I'm and Viewfinder. Confused. So well, I, I'm. I'm well, it's like Sea of Stars for this one, right? Yeah, I'm down to put my vote through Sea of Stars. Sea of Stars, baby, that ruled. Yeah. I'm not yeah, but that I should play her. Cocoon. I probably should play Cocoon. It's on Game Pass. Dave the Diver yeah. is not an indie game. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, what is what is the wait, 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 Dave wait. the Diver? Well, like, it's not an indie game. It's an independent about. game, right? Or is that what indie supposed that to be? That is what indie stands for, typically. Oh, then what on. was the previous category? D- oh, it was debut, debut right? Like oh, okay, okay. Studio, like, Tom, I got a question. There are two protagonists in Sea of Stars, yes? Yeah. Is it? How much do they date? They don't date. <laughs> There's no Are dating. They, gonna... <laughs> they were born on the same day. They're kind of like a brother sister relationship, okay. but they aren't actually. Right. That so they're brother and sisterly. Yes. Okay. No dating. <coughs> Let just yeah, we can okay. Both I guess that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that was like no one boning. <laughs> that's why Baldur's Gate. Favorite. You can't play. Yeah, that's <laughs> I just want romance in my fucking games. God damn it! Oh, no, that's you're right. You're right. Oh, it's Baldur's Gate three. Full stop. On just a little aside, I want to know why 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 is Halo not here? Why is Destiny off. 2 here when isn't, isn't Bungie just pissing off the community left and yeah, right? Yeah, Bungie's pissing off the community with yeah. Destiny 2. <laughs> They're doing a really bad like, job. Isn't Bungie this. like literally, oh, you can't play this content at all anymore? Bye. Like, what, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, they did do that. Confused. They sure did do that. So, yeah. Destiny 2 should not be. I'm confused by these, by these I definitely not sometimes. vote for Destiny 2. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I wanted to go for Baldur's well, Gate. Well, this too. is. What, what is this? Say? Recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness, inclusive of social media activity and game updates and patches. Absolutely, Baldur's Gate three. So, uh, yeah, like I don't remember Cyberpunk or CD Projekt Red being transparent <laughs> at <Yeah>. all. <laughs> well, this year, like, this year, twenty twenty three. Like for this year, yeah, but like <laughs> no. Nah. The well, terrible what about, what about in Final the Fantasy background. 14? Final Fantasy 14 is fine. I uh, like. Yeah, nothing they, big they, happened there this year, right? Yeah, I mean, like they, they're currently working on an expansion, so technically their community support is not nearly as good as it normally is because of the expansion that's coming out pretty soon. I mean, and it's fine. It's totally fine. But the reason why I'm saying specifically Baldur's Gate 3 is not only because of the sheer amount of content that they're putting out of the game. They are literally like, this is a game that's been in development for. Five years with like a, a a play act one version out for a long time, where they literally took comments from like the uh, player base. It's they were. I do, yeah. They they, they were like a community driven development basically, exactly. almost. but also like, they've put out like mad patches since the game came out, based off I, of like stuff that people have been like, you know, talking them about, and they've done lots of like. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what we're like thinking about. We're like, yeah, not thinking about DLC at the moment. That like their mm-hmm. FAQs trying to be transparent. I'm like, yeah, there's going to be no microtransactions. We're we're yeah. just not going to do that. I was actually up in... stuff, and also their mm-hmm. their social media stuff has been great. Like their oh, yeah. their ads with like the animated like cartoons. Oh, it's just... the the only fangs commercial that they had for Astarian <laughs> really putting worried. sexy vampire stuff. Like, <laughs> I also have to say, I went to DC for two weeks um, recently, and uh, you know, I finished playing a game. I went up to DC for two weeks. I came back, and the UI has improved drastically <laughs> like the game looks the same and it still plays the same but everything just makes more sense now mm-hmm. everything plays a little bit more cohesively so i i think i'm gonna put my my vote yeah. behind Baldur's gate it sounds like this is gonna have overlap with best ongoing game but i, I don't definitely know yeah. gate has. Well, gate nominated I, mean, for that? I, like, I don't know yeah we'll see. i feel like ongoing game needs to be ongoing right like there could be, I mean, there's the uh, the argument for like Cyberpunk there with their like update 2.0 patch or whatever, but yeah, it, it kind of feels like just like the release of the game coming like right, fucking yeah yeah when they and release their first point, DLC years after. It's like yeah. it's it's so late. It just is. that's a transparency yeah. issue exactly. I if they were at least communicating more and when, besides what they released and how that wasn't very transparent of them at all. Yeah. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. Best ongoing. Baldur's Gate okay. replaced with Apex Legends. <laughs> <laughs> and Fortnite replaced Destiny. And Fortnite. Genshin Impact replaced Destiny. Hey, you know else. what? Fortnite put out no build, and everyone was like, can this just be the game? And then it kind of did they just be the game. <laughs> they did do that, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, well, I. Fortnite I, loses just because they won't put Master Chief back in the item shop. So. <laughs> I'm gonna vote for Final Fantasy XIV just because, I mean, as it stands, they they keep on doing stuff with it. I do not play Fortnite, but I feel like Fortnite has gone like so far for what it is, and like has done so much cool stuff over its time, and like it's incredible to me that it even still is like as, as popular it as it is. Mm-hmm. And just, like, the fucking memes that I see of, like, John Wick with the Xenomorph <laughs> with, like, Goku, like, or as Alan a squad, Wake. and, like, yeah, Rick Sanchez, <laughs> like, it's it's absolutely nuts, and I feel like they're the kind of the ones that pioneered that whole, like, crossover thing, and, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, mean, right. I, mean, I, I kind of feel it. like it's Fortnite like... deserves it just because it, it really is, like, an ongoing game that, like, somehow is just still... Long it's it different every year, yeah. yeah Still plug in. How long has it been around? How when was it like released initially? I'm say like yeah, I mean it was like I remember being in high school and it was still like the most popular thing the kids were doing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'm like crazy, but I feel like it's been like at least ten years. No, you're no, not wrong. You are you are crazy. <laughs> Am I? Fortnite like is the game to clown on, but you know, you gotta respect. Yeah. Like, you have to respect I, it. I, yeah. 
I'll throw out that really, respect. They really did it to him, frankly. They, they had really to, and they did. had to. Dude, they took over the whole fucking world, bro. <laughs> yeah. Games for impact. Oh, this one's going to be tough because <laughs> we don't know. Uh, what is that? The, the, the thumbnail for Terranil looks cool. The thumbnail for Chance of Xenar looks cool. <laughs> that also looks Actually, I, I, I knew a guy, or I've like talked with a guy who really likes Terranil. Oh. Uh, well, what about Goodbye Volcano like High? <laughs> Goodbye Volcano <laughs> I don't know what that is. Don't do it. Do you remember it was in one of the PlayStation showcases or something? Yeah, it was in a... It it's like Dinosaurus, oh, but... It's, it, yeah, it's Dinosaurus, but it's um uh fucking... You know, you know the... the God, what's it called? It's the high schooler one where time travel. Life is strange. It's like Life is Strange, but dinosaurs and poorly written. Very poorly written. Yeah, from what I've seen. What is Terranil? What is what is the game? Yeah, tell us more so about it. So it's like yeah, Netflix. I don't know, it was it was a guy who was all about like uh, like eco games Netflix. and like uh like sort of like city builders, but like about doing them like you know correctly and conservatively or whatever and he was really big on Terra Nil is just like a like I don't it's like a puzzle slash utopia builder kind of uh, game where it's like I'll you know naturally irrigate this stuff and turn like this into a marshland and that'll bring like these birds in kind of thing so the thought uh, it, it, so like a, is... it seemed like just kind of like a like a simulation sort of puzzler and like a cozy, like nice looking, you know, nature vibe. Okay. You, so it's environmental. Kind of like a relaxing, just enjoyable, yeah, environment game. Do you get to smoke weed in that game? Do they smoke weed? It seems like the kind of game you would smoke weed while you're playing and have just like a very pleasant time. Yeah. You can smoke weed in by Volcano High, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can actually. All right. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the one. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't have to vote for that. <laughs> We're not voting for the Bible. Hey, I would vote Terranil just because I've heard of it. I can vote for Terranil. Look cool. I do like I do like the the image for Chance of Sinar. That looks really cool. Yeah, I want to find out what that is. I wonder, no, like, what's the like, good. What's that. the social message of that? You know, like, what is it about? I don't comb know. your hair. Go <laughs> Make sure you go. They look like aliens, don't they? <laughs> kind Respect of. aliens. Innovations and accessibility. Uh, I, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what each of these games did for accessibility purposes. Diablo I have no idea. Is, yeah. Diablo Four is a um, microtransaction hell, so that shouldn't. Even <laughs> no. Be I, know, I know. I know. High Rush. No, they had a screen reader because I had to turn it off. That's something. <laughs> oh, I Rush because it's like a music game. I know it like lets you change like the beat the beats per minute, like to like Ooh, very slow that's if you neat. really wanted to. That's nice. So, Spider Man. Like... You, know, you know what's kind of funny? As somebody who sucks at rhythm games, that actually would make it very easy for me to play High <laughs> Five Rush. Yeah. <laughs> I know Spider Man, I... like every Sony exclusive, is like really yeah. big on that. Yeah. I do know that. I do know that's a big thing for Spider Man. They, they make it as, as, as um, accessible as possible. Street Fighter um, 6 added like, a, like an easy mode, right? Or something where it like automatically does stuff for you, but no. That doesn't know. sound very fun. I heard yeah, like well. people talking about kind of that, yeah. But it, it sounded mostly like a bad thing more than a good thing. <laughs> uh, okay, know. so who do we want to vote for? Do you want to vote for Mortal Kombat 1, Spider-Man, or Hyper Rush? I vote Mortal Kombat 1 just because I, hey, I enjoy that game. Hey, what did Mortal Kombat 1 do? <laughs> what did Mortal Kombat 1 uh, Like I said, it had a screen reader. Screen reader, right. right. I don't know. I don't know if they did anything else. I think there's probably like a colorblind mode for like the story or something. Oh yeah, it has subtitles. Didn't Forza okay, have... Okay, let's just go with Hi-Fi Rush. <laughs> Didn't Forza have like ALS translation? Oh, that's like a, interesting. A person oh, appears on the yeah. screen. Oh, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's cool. Actually, that does sound pretty cool. Although, I have to say, I think if we're talking about just full-on being able to play the game. <laughs> I'd fire rush would get my vote. Because <laughs> you can turn the BPM down really low so that you can press the buttons easier. <laughs> Dang. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it sounds like Hi-Fi Rush had two. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm never going to say no to giving game. Hi-Fi Rush something because I feel like it deserved way more than it got. Yeah, just just bias of like... It's, it's a hard year, man. Uh, yeah. Resident Evil 4, it came out like 18 years ago. <laughs> uh, oh, oh yeah, it's it? not accessible at all. Oh boy, that? best Damn. performance. Ooh. We got Ben Starr, we got Cameron Monaghan, we got Idris, literally Idris Elba. Idris we got Elba. Melanie Libard, Neil Newbin. And you know the Oh, definitely Neil Newbin. Fantastic. Asterian was amazing. <laughs> he looks I'm like him. Is real. that intentional? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't they, think so. <laughs> maybe a little bit. Like maybe? I don't know. However, I'm, yeah, his voice well, acting work is fucking incredible in that game. And there's so, so good, many lines. Um, and my man is charismatic as hell. He can put them out. He can put out those lines like nobody's fucking business. I love Ben Starr, just his Twitter posts. It's a Mia. A Mario. Are you looking for Mario? Because it's a Mia. It's a Mia. A Mario. Who am I? I'm a, a Mia. A Mario. A Mia is a Mia, and I am a Mario. Fuck you. He's pretty funny. <laughs> I actually, I don't know who Melanie Levert voices in Alan Wake 2. I'm guessing it's Saga Anderson. Um, Saga Anderson. She is. Okay, so she's one of the two main characters. She does a very good job, and I, I do like the character a lot, but I don't think it's quite the performance that Neil does in Baldur's Gate 3. Neil knocked it out of the fucking park with Baldur's Gate 3. I'm gonna vote for him. Was it intentional in the cyberpunk commercial when Idris Elba said, The game is fixed. It's okay, I didn't play. Just don't forget. The game is fixed. Was that was, was intentional. That... Yeah, they were saying, like, look, you should come back and play it because it's fixed now. Yeah, that was literally very intentional. I do love that. I do think that's good. The game is, that's really funny. I'm <laughs> down for voice <laughs> I just hope, uh, I don't know if you want to give it to, like, an actual Hollywood star, though, or the, nah. or the Jedi Survivor guy. I'm voting for Neil. <laughs> I'm cool with Neil. I've seen it from your guys playing it a little bit. He's he's pretty good. He's great. But I do like Ben Star. I would always show like the clip of him getting hit with the the sunbeam is like the, <laughs> yeah. the voice acting is. It's like I'm sorry. I'll do better next time. Next time. Oh no 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 no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there will be no next time. <laughs> But there's, All like, right. voice lines for if you take him to the Sun Temple and then blow up the Sun Temple with the giant sunbeam and you leave him inside when you do it, and then you bring him back to life. He's very upset that you did so. <laughs> and you're like, but I thought you were good against the sunlight. Then he's like, hmm, I guess there's a bit of a difference between, oh, a nice summer's day and the full concentrated power of the sun. <laughs> Apparently, there's a limit. Somewhere between a nice summer's day and the full concentrated power of the sun! Alright, you, you got me. Okay. I'll vote for him. <laughs> Go for it. Hell Neil? Yeah. His lines are so good, I fucking still remember them, like, word for word, yeah. fucking way later. Like. Baldur's Gate I'll sweet, you, man. man. Baldur's Gate sweet. I will, I will just say, though, uh, uh, Yuri Lowenthal, his voice is kind of grating, and also he's the reason that we got a worse... A face model for Peter Parker, so Mama it's his Mia. fault. Dang. Wow, it's, it's his fault, fault because yeah. his mocap of the voice did not like it. Apparently, didn't uh, work well with the facial structure of the old model. That's Ooh. why they did it. I don't know. All right. Yeah, that's what they said. Best, Best audio, design. audio design. I'm gonna say Hi-Fi Rush, man. It's an audio game. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush is this a music game? It has a like a I guess a bonus in that aspect, but like in I terms of like action. Uh, it sounds really good. I don't know if I would say it's like a, the best audio design. Is that like is good? Can tell us more about about Hi-Fi Rush's audio design. No, the music in it's awesome, and then the I like the the environmental stuff also. Like is on beat with the music, so it's like diegetic sounds also. That's but nice. besides that, it's like I, I mean, it's kind of what you would expect. I'm not sure. I'm sure Resident Evil 4 and Dead Space do cool stuff also, but yeah. I mean, I've played Alan Wake 2 and Resident Evil 4. I've not played Dead Space Remake, but I played the original one. Like, all of them are, like, good audio design. I don't know if I have any played... of them are, like, standout award-winning I mean, to me. Yeah, I mean, that's what I say. I'd I've probably played... give it to the actual, like, yeah, yeah. audio <laughs> game. Yeah. Where, yeah, like, that's fine. the audio is part of the game. Like, I see it as, like, good audio design when it's, <laughs> yeah. like... Also, I also like how and fits the tone and 
is like unique and original and is also part of the game. <laughs> Oh, Hi-Fi Rush also has like a streamer mode where it plays like not it has licensed music but if you want to not play the licensed music because you're streaming it has an option for that and I heard that music is just as good as the licensed music. That's good. See, I played Dead impressive. Space. Hell yeah. I played the Dead Space remake and it's fine but it, it, it's almost like saying like oh they did good sound design because they did the sound design good because it, you have to do that <laughs> for horror games. Yeah, it, it's spooky <laughs> and dark sometimes so that there's dark. the horror stings so of like eh, when like right. you know something spooky happens, you know, it's like oh, okay. I think I have to agree. Surprise Force is not on here. What was that? Surprise Force is not on here. Usually Forza gets like praised for how for its audio like well, all i'm, all audio, I'm saying so. is i have to agree with you guys with hi-fi rush if we're talking about a game that is music based and that's like the focus of it then yeah of course it's gonna have the best audio design yeah yep, my vote hi-fi rush yep mm-hmm. hi hi the score the score the music, <laughs> the score music. Uh, i kind of want to do hi-fi rush again it's got okay good hold stuff. on i have to i have to put in something here which is actually alan wake 2 has a fantastic soundtrack i don't think it's a spoiler here to say that at the end of like every chapter like part of the story there's like a pseudo music video that plays yeah like there's like a song for every chapter of the game oh and it's like there's also like several like gameplay sections that are very heavily music based that are incredible. Hmm. Sounds okay. cool. Um, I've played Baldur's Gate three and its music tracks are nice. I like the sounds that they make. Baldur's Gate three had very, very good music too. The main theme is you know, actually, is a banger. Do you know what got me with Baldur's Gate? the siren song no, okay the siren song and there's a song that eli you've never heard before because you always do evil runs but there's a song <laughs> there's a song in good run in a couple of the good runs that like uh i feel like it just it it has a gravitas to it and i keep remembering it and like I, it keeps coming back to my brain every time i go to bed sometimes where i'm like i will hear it it's a very ethereal sound and it's just very powerful and poignant and it fills you with a whole bunch of energy, and it just makes you feel powerful and and like ready for action. And it's really neat. Also, um, uh, if you go to hell, which you can do in Baldur's Gate, <laughs> they have, they have uh, the, um, the 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 uh, not to get into spoiler territory. There is a character here who has got like a theme song, and the theme song actually kind of fucking slaps a little bit. So I like Baldur's Gate three's music, but I okay. don't. I don't know if I can compare I, it to anything. Else. I can say here I have played both games this time. Yes. And I agree, Down by the River, you know, classic. Tons right. of great music in Baldur's Gate 3. Uh-huh. You could like all all the, you know, getting the party together with the bard instruments or whatever and all playing a tune together. Fantastic. <laughs> right. I I don't think overall, like for best score for like the whole game and all that. It, mm-hmm. it really holds a candle to Alan Wake, too. I'll have to believe you for that. I'll have to take your word for it. Um, Does tell Zelda us about... have a soundtrack? What is it? Zelda, Zelda does. even have a soundtrack. Cause Breath of Zelda the has music. And honestly, if we're going to be honest, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom has some very, very unique music that I think sounds really good. Yeah, I'm done with the... Huh. with the uh, Zelda doesn't have music. It's not true. Wait, it has it? music. What? It does. Breath of the Wild? Yeah, Breath yeah, of the Wild. Well, yeah, yeah, Breath, Breath of the Wild, Wild has music. <laughs> yes. They actually, they do have music, and it does not sound bad. It, it actually is really unique and cool. Uh, the Hinox theme, the fucking, a lot of the boss themes sound really, really cool. I don't know what to tell you. The soundtrack is fine. It's good. I like it. Okay. I'm bad enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> that being said, though, I think it might just be a tie between either Hi-Fi Rush or Alan Wake 2. I'm on I the fence. Say... I want to hear arguments for both of them. Wait, 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 Devin, I, I say, gotta hear uh, about Soken. What? Soken? Final Fantasy 16. Final Fantasy 16 doesn't there, stick is there, out? Is there an argument for there? At yeah, all? 16 has music. <laughs> 16 has a soundtrack, I guess. Wow. I'm okay, pretty, that's gotta be a hot take. Like <laughs> it's, not, it's not bad. It's just, it's just it, orchestral. 
you know. So like compared to what he does for fourteen, it's not. It's yeah, not fourteen good. has a lot more just interesting tracks, like with the mini bosses and some of the themes of certain areas. I think it's a lot more. It's got a lot more personality. And Final Fantasy four sixteen soundtrack isn't bad by all means. Like it, it is serviceable. It does what it needs to do well, and it doesn't get annoying. Uh, but I do think I, I do remember playing through the entire game and just being like, oh yeah, this is just orchestral music. This is just an orchestral score, and it's a really well composed one. But at some point, you can only listen to orchestral music for so long until it starts to just become part of the background. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I and just you know, I heard it was really good, so I'm, this is surprising. It, it's fine. They do have they do have some they do have some bangers. I think I think there are some pretty good bangers. I mean, in but... the grand scheme of isn't Final Fantasy known for its soundtrack? So in the grand scheme of the franchise, does it hold up to those standards? Grand scheme of the franchise, um, uh, maybe I don't remember them. I might need to get back into the game to properly comment on it. But as as it stands, the soundtracks didn't really stick out to me as much like i think of all the games that exist here based on the way that eli's talking about alan wake and based on the way that hi-fi rush has been described and because i've played legend of zelda and Baldur's gate 3 i do think that of the the things that i've played final fantasy 14 or 16 as much as the game is great it definitely has the weakest soundtrack wow okay say so i've added several okay. of the songs yeah. from hi-fi rush to my spotify but that was also the case of the original alan wake and i'm sure alan wake 2 isn't that dude different. i i, I gotta say like i i already talked a little bit about it i i there are parts that i would love to talk about because i feel like they're great arguments for this but also just mentioning the fact that they exist would be like spoilers in a way but, like i don't okay. want to ruin the moment for anyone at all but i already mentioned like they have like sort of like a a, a like pseudo music video kind of like yeah. song play after every chapter and just to, like play into that again like why i like that so much is like a the songs usually fit sort of into the tone and the feeling that they're trying to set at the same time because again it's sort of this weird multimedia conglomerate instead of just a video game and also mm -hmm. uh it feels so satisfying like going through like a whole chapter making it through the climax of whatever you're doing it's spooky you're like you know high stress whatever like especially like i remember like i think the second time i did it i've just beaten a boss and you just get to take a second and just be like chapter end and then sit there for like two minutes as this like excellent song plays and you just get to like ah oh, and save and then you like begin the next one or whatever and you can move on and then you would it it just like it fits into the whole experience so well, I feel like. Gabe, does High Fire Rush have dubstep? Yeah, there's there's dubstep. There's the, at least there's a few. There's a dubstep like portion. Like it has a variety of music. Some of it's like okay. it has a lot of rock, and it even has like classical. Like there's a boss fight to Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Ooh. Um, but yeah, it, but I was gonna say, Eli, did you add any of the, like? Did you listen to any of the music like outside of the game after the fact or no? Well, I've I've re-listened to them in the in-game radio, uh, oh. and like a couple of them have been like kind of stuck in my head. But like, I haven't like I don't I don't really I'm not the kind of guy who has plays lists. Like I listen to radio. <laughs> hey Eli, how much like Pandora and stuff? Uh, so far none. Okay. <laughs> it, it does sound like Hi-Fi Rush probably like incorporates the music more in the actual, like, gameplay itself than Alan Wake does, although I will say, like, not entirely, <laughs> but... Okay, well, uh, what I will say is, is sometimes you might have... Not, you know, I've not played Hi-Fi Rush, and Gabe has not played Alan Wake, so it's hard to... Mm -hmm. Right. But Tom, what are you leaning towards? Because I'm pretty much on the fence here. I'm on the fence, too. Hmm. Uh, I feel That's like... It's hard, because neither of us have played both. Yeah, I feel like Hi-Fi Rush would win it just because, like, this is how people vote. Like, oh, it's music, and this game is music, so it gets it. But the way you guys are describing yeah. it is like, man, I want to play Alan Wake 2. I want to see what I've actually, I've actually, I actually I just so recommend playing <laughs> Alan Wake 2. I, I, gotta, oh, I do yeah, not I think one. you have to have played Alan Wake 1 if that's what's holding you up. Well, no, I, well, like I, no. I would definitely play the first one first, but... Well, you know. should play Alan Wake 1 because it's a good game. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to get the full picture. I've actually. Alan Wake Two is an incredible game. I know exactly what you feel when you're describing the idea of a soundtrack hitting during the course of a like a game, and you are like sitting there witnessing something just amazing, 
and the soundtrack is blaring and emphasizing how absolutely important the thing that you're looking at is. So I feel that pretty drastically and pretty heavily with Alec Wake 2. But also at the same time, I do know that High Fair Rush does have some really good fingers on the inside. So I'm still on the fence. I will be a tiebreaker if I need to be a tiebreaker, but otherwise I'm going to leave this up to Tom. Oof. I'm going to be a tiebreaker. <laughs> I don't like to. Nice. Eli, Eli mm-hmm. convinced me. He got he had a good argument. Mm-hmm. And there's like uh, also just like <laughs> see like there's reasons why I think that the music in that game is good that I also just can't even really talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still think I still think if it's anything like the first game hit would uh, win it. Mm-hmm. Best art direction. Okay, high five rush. Lions of P is pretty beautiful. Um, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom has some really fantastic shots. Um, the way that Eli talks about Alan Wake 2, it sounds really, really... I, I definitely beautiful. definitely really like the art direction in that game, but, but um, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say it's like... Like, I've seen, like, Lies of P. Like, mm-hmm. you know, people play that game. It's like, okay, that, that art direction looks nuts. It is beautiful. You know, like, Alan Wake is a... Like, it's more... Uh, grounded in reality to okay. like like it, it look and it looks great and like it helps with the immersion and stuff but i feel like what i like as a creative art direction would probably be liza p for me i have to say i have seen the art for high for rush and it does look extremely it almost feels like if someone took borderlands and made it less grungy if that makes any sense mm-hmm. it's like a brighter true yeah area. Which, which actually it reminds me of Sunset Overdrive, if you like remember that game at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have to agree. Um, so I think this has some really fantastic art styles, but I do think, especially playing through Lazarus P, it scratched an an art itch that I didn't know that I had um, since Bloodborne. <laughs> I think yeah. Lazarus P gave me, it scratched the Bloodborne itch for me, and that makes me want to vote for it. It was like an interesting crossover of like the usual like gothic dark horror that I like, you know, I feel like I'm already a fan of and you probably are too with like Bloodborne, but then like oh, yes. the weird like mechanics and puppets and stuff. Oh, there's yes. like a cool like extra unique to the game layer on the so art it, direction that that kind of like just worked in like a cool and creepy sort of way. What's actually really fantastic, right, is I think part of the art direction, it's a lot of stuff, right? It's the way that the world works, it's the way that the art works in the world, it's the way that the shading, the textures work, but I think it's also the design of the things as well inside of the world. And I think has some really fantastic designs. I love this guy's robotic arm, uh, arm is what it is. I love the way that his guitar turns into an axe, I love the way that the weaponry changes, um, but I think with Lies of P specifically, I love the variations of the environment, because like, Especially one of the traps that you normally would fall into with something like the Lies of P is things start to look the same. Because you can only have so many gothic architectural buildings where you're like, okay, I've seen that like 10 times over. And then the question becomes like, how do you make that interesting? Lies of P does that by changing the lighting up. Um, It does that by changing the enemy designs up. Because the enemy designs are also really, really varied, despite the fact that like they're all just robots. Well, okay, they that is not true. There are a lot of robots. But the enemies are also very different and varied as well. It's not just robots. It's not just, um, it's, they're not just like puppet robots. There's so much interesting design to the enemies. The weapon designs are also really, really fantastic. And it's really cool how you can combine them. Um, much like Legend of Zelda, you have the ability to like take apart things and put stuff back together to make new different weapons, which is really, really cool. The art of the building design, the architectural design, the way that they made the city, um, I, I forget what it specifically is called. Um, the city of Lies of P is constructed really, really beautifully. Um, you actually get the ability to look at like the overarching layout of the city from certain parts, and you're like, oh, that's what that's how that's how that all fits together. And you kind of kind of see like the through line of the level design. I, I was a very big fan of it. Hmm. What were your thoughts on Hi-Fi Rush Gabe? Like, why did you like it so much? Oh, well, I just want to say I'm I'm sick of the Breath of the Wild art style, so I don't even want to consider that one. And oh, I'll, no. I'll <laughs> it any, if even if any of you did, I'm just so sick of that. I think that <laughs> that series it peaked with the Wii U trailer, and then it got worse every time they showed it. After. <laughs> oh no! 
Uh, so, Mario Wonder looks cool, but it's like hard to tell if it just looks cool in comparison to like New Super Mario Bros. Not <laughs> just because yeah. we've been dealing with that for so long that anything looks better than that. Um, from what True. I played of Liza P, it kind of just looks like more. F it looked like a combination of like From Soft and like Near Automata in terms of art direction, mm -hmm. which like neither of those really like. Those are the most like pleasing to look at games. In my mm -hmm. opinion, at least, and you know, um, and then yeah, and then like, I don't know. I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm praising High Fly Rush too much, but like, I was smiling for like a majority of that game just because mm -hmm. of how amazing it looked and how everything came together. I get that. I get that. High Fly Rush is a little bit easier like it, to kind of like... at, the, at the beginning of the in, in the first level. It's like. You get to a point where you get to like over like overlook the city and like see everything in that like one landscape shot and like everything is moving and everything has like has like action lines around it and you can like literally see music going through the art direction and and like yeah it's I don't know it was really it was really cool it's like mm -hmm. it's like since Cuphead I haven't seen something like that. Okay, that's kind of funny. So both Gabe and I have given the description of a city shot. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah, because it's like... Right. You know. Yeah, Gabe, your, your description, it sounds like actually your, your description is a lot more vibrant and lively and full of life and color and motion and uh, just alive. And I guess for me, it's a lot darker and grim, but you get to see it from a, like, a, you get to see like the grim and kind of, I guess, morbid interlockings of the way that the world works so i guess this might just be a whole personal preference situation here because my personal preference leans towards lies of p but if you are much more of a fan of like brighter happier more energetic art styles then hi-fi rush might be the way to go hi-fi rush is like if they kept if they if the games that they're making like during the gamecube ps2 and xbox era if they kept making those types of games today and like that's mm -hmm. that's what it feels like so it's very nostalgic gotcha. Damn, sold me instantly <laughs> it does nostalgic. feel nostalgic. Yeah. All right. Then I'm, I'm good with going for Hi-Fi Rush. Hi well, I'm Rush? curious. We didn't really hear it. Like, yeah, Tom, did you did you have strong thoughts? I kinda You're just no, sold on like, Hi-Fi no Rush. I kind of have no dice just in this race. Uh, have not Do you want to defend of... Mario or no? No, nah, I think you're kind of right about that. <laughs> I'm also, like, Tears of the Kingdom looks great, but... It mm -hmm. looks exactly like Breath of the Wild. I don't even think it should be nominated. It's not like a new direction of anything. It's just the same. So it's true. I'm good with Hi Fi Rush. I feel like we're voting for it a lot, but yeah, that's fine. We're voting for Baldur's Gate three a lot too. Yeah. True. All right. <laughs> oh, we're so close to the end. We are. It's time <laughs> for best nair. I have no rate. I have no it. Oh, it's <laughs> no okay, we, at all. We gotta ask Eli because it's Baldur's Gate or Alan Wake. It seems. Mm -hmm. Why well, he beat uh, Alan Wake? I he mean, hasn't the it. actual narrative. Yeah. I I would already say Alan Wake. Really? Ooh. Really? I, really? I think Baldur's Gate three's like main strengths are in its like systems and the fact that it's like you know s such an open RPG where you can like pull on so many different threads and go so many different ways. But the actual like story itself, like I mean, it's it's very good. I don't I don't think it's anywhere near as good as Alan Wake Two's is though. Interesting. So here's here's my thought. Here's my thought, and this is gonna sound weird. Uh -huh. I love Baldur's Gate three with a burning passion, and I love it for reasons because it's related to D and D, of course, one of my favorite things. But that all being said, I have to agree with Eli. If we're talking about the story, just in general, like we're talking about the main story, we're talking about the main thorough through. It is a standard D and D session, which can be fun, but it's maybe not the most I mean, it's not necessarily terribly innovative, potentially, but it, it, you know, it's really cool, it's really fun, but, you know, you've definitely, if you've played D&D &D before, you've seen that kind of storyline before. Now, main story-wise, yeah, I get that. Side story-wise, if we're talking about the way that the characters fit into the world, how their stories progress, 
the storylines that you can take with other characters in the world. I think that's the biggest thing, right? It's not the main story of the game itself, but the little stories that you get around all the other characters. Now, Eli, I know you didn't get this because you kill everybody. The, the companion stories. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I did several. Stories. Well, here's the thing, here's the thing. Not just the companion stories. I'm also talking about the NPC stories as well. Which, of course, you don't get very much because you kill everybody that you see. <laughs> so... <laughs> but that, in turn, made my personal story, like, all the more important to me. Exactly, right? exactly. And, like, that's all... That's what it I'm enhanced saying. my main character syndrome just through the roof. And, and that, that's, like, a, that's a fantastic thing. But I do, I do want to put forth the concept that... While it's always one for what like one hundred percent wonderful when you get like your main storylines down for your personal character story and your uh, follower stories, I do enjoy that there are storylines that actually not only make sense but are extremely meaningful for side characters that don't join your party, but you can kind of see how their life changes based on what you're going through in the story as well. And there's so many different outcomes. There's so many different things that will happen based on what you do with certain characters. Um. And while the main story itself is your standard D&D session, it has the art, it has, for me personally, the magic of a D&D world where the story progresses, but what really matters is the interpersonal stories within the main story. The different things that interchange and interlock, the way that different things interact with each other, and the way that stuff progresses. Um, now, of course, I've not played Alan Wake 2, so I, I cannot say anything about that it sounds like it's got an extremely cohesive main story that makes a lot of sense it's extremely engaging and it's <laughs> I, hold, hold on that's a lot of assumptions okay <laughs> tell me more yeah, make that i i more. said it was really good i never said it was cohesive <laughs> or easily understood oh fair <laughs> enough okay so we got a dark soul situation going on okay fair enough Maybe not you not that either game, though Eli. it's <laughs> what you didn't play on like one I played Alan Wake one. Okay. Oh. Oh wait. Or then you didn't, you didn't play American Nightmare. I did not play American Nightmare. No, I did not play the DLC for Control the, that was like somehow Xbox. I thought. God. Gotcha. So this was an Xbox Live arcade game. Is that the one? Wait, what is the Control one then? That's A W E. That's A W E. Is that the one where the lady has like brain powers or something? No, no, don't that's Alan Wake still. Never mind. <laughs> well, okay. okay, well, having only played Alan Wake one and two, <laughs> has anyone played Cyberpunk: Phantom Liberty or no? Eh, uh, uh, no. the only one planning on it. I, I, I still am planning on it, but geez, there's just been like so much other stuff going on. Absolutely. Uh, Final Fantasy no, my vote is my story. vote is definitely for Alan Wake too. Oh, my vote is my vote is pretty solidly for Baldur's Gate three. Well, <laughs> only one of these games lets you play with the exaggerated swagger of a black team. A black team. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Spider Man. I, I don't know. I I haven't been Spider Man two yet. I don't know why it's nominated to literally every single symbiote storyline you've ever seen. Oof. It's literally like. So far, okay. I don't know. Maybe they do something really crazy at the end, but it's a very good story. It's highly compelling. Uh, mm -hmm. Baldur's Gate Three's is like good, I think, for like an RPG. I think Alan Wake is great for a horror game, mm -hmm. and like Baldur's Gate Three, it it like shifts and moves to fit your choices, like kind of. But because of that, it is like yeah. It loses its own personality. Inherently, like, like, there is a creative vision that is, like, I cannot believe some of the choices they make in Alan Wake's story, but they, like, you know, there's such confidence and, like, just decision to execute and, like I say, like, just this creative vision that they wanted to make with this and put into the game. Okay. And it, it's guess... it's very good. All right, all right. I guess oh. the way I see it, I haven't played either of these games, but it's like Alan Wake, you're guaranteed a good story. And then yeah. the story you get in Baldur's Gate 3 could either be. It's the one kind of that like you make. Not as good. Mm. Yeah. I see. I get Based what you're talking about. You okay, you know, you're all right. That's pretty subjective. I'm still putting my vote behind Baldur's Gate 3, but I can respect it all in two wins this one. I'm always going to get Probably behind go a, a solid single and developed narrative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alan Wake has like a real person actor and you get to watch like live action just like 
<laughs> episodic cutscene thing. It's it's hard to explain, but like yeah, you get to just like Quantum Break. Have you played Quantum Break? <laughs> I <laughs> have. This is so much better than what Quantum Break did. <laughs> no. I literally was talking about it earlier. It's like imagine Quantum Break, but good. <laughs> like, well, why did they mess up Quantum Break so bad? What? I don't know. Maybe because it was the first try, and they did much better here. You know, maybe they just learned from their mistakes. They didn't know how to do stuff. You know, like the CGI was really bad. They they were like very bendy. Okay. Yeah. How the way it is. They also were drinking. They were drinking when they made Quantum Break. Yes. This game is going to be a bunch of like Devin gushing over Fallout Escape 3, me gushing over Alloway 2, and <laughs> yeah. gushing over I Fire Rush. It's, it's yeah. correct. <laughs> Tom, what is it? What is it that like your? What is your horse in this race? <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. Like That's I'm the curious, bit. what do you <laughs> even think the game of year is going to be? What I think is going to be? Oh, Baldur's Gate. Oh no, but what do you? What would be your personal? I guess. Anyway, let's just go to the next subject. Look. I, I clicked it. It's loading. <laughs> oh. It's loading. It's trying its damnedest. Okay. Um, what is it? Oh. Best game direction or something? Yeah, there you yeah. go. Got it. Okay. I don't I know what this means. Oh, oh, innovation. So these are just the game of the year nominees, except missing Resident Evil Four. I mean, honestly, I I'm gonna go That's for Baldur's Gate. Yeah. yeah, it's true. I'm gonna go for Baldur's Gate again. I I think I go for Baldur's Gate specifically because of how. <laughs> much they planned for for that game <laughs> the sheer amount of attention to detail that you have in that game is just next level i'm assuming eli is going to talk in, in I, depth about I, I gotta vote <laughs> alan wake again <laughs> we're just we're probably gonna specifically have creative vision and design <laughs> like uh, they did I'm, assuming, incredible. I'm assuming we're gonna have this conversation again with game of the year so i'm just gonna go say alan wake right now and then we're if there's anything else to say, you can <laughs> play it during that conversation. <laughs> sure. You know, like for for me, like a Baldur's Gate three is like the probably the bigger and better game overall. But I think like the the art, the like creative vision, and the story of Alan Wake two are like its high points of like being okay. a fantastic game. You know. Okay. All right. Here okay. I gotta like. I Again, I gotta, I gotta give the creative vision to Alan Wake Two. This shit's I'll take, incredible. I'll take it. I'm still voting for Baldur's Gate Three, but I'll take, I'll take Alan Wake Two if necessary. I think it was very good game direction to let you play as Daisy. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go with Mario. <laughs> oh no, they outvoted us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, no, I'm, I'm down to go with Mario. Have. Actually, let's go. I'm down to go to Mario. For I think this, there's I feel like we something. Didn't vote for it at all. There's something to be said about the direction they did with Mario. They did everything. <laughs> They did literally everything people wanted them to do. Every I literally single... defended New Super Mario Bros. And yeah. I think Mario Wonders better. Every Eli, single no level pocket. in that game has a gimmick. Like most most Nintendo games have this weird gimmick. It's like, yeah, hey, on a couple levels you get to grow giant. And it's like, alright. In this level, there's a gimmick to every single level and it's different every time. The that online... is pretty pretty cool mm -hmm. the, the game but they don't tell you like when they first revealed the online thing was like oh i don't even know if i'm gonna care about that but what you don't know is that the game is designed entirely around this online yeah aspect there are levels that were like you have to figure out where things are hidden and it's like impossible to figure out but you got four other people running around jumping on things together <laughs> and and one person and also, hits something and you're like oh my god guys over there and you just go it's like it's such a new, fun experience for Mario. It's exactly what he needed after years of being the same bland, jump around, hit a Goomba thing. I think it should be in this race for direction. So that's my... That's it. That's my vote. Honestly, because it's the, it's the only game I've played that isn't Spider-Man, and Spider-Man is just more Spider-Man, I'm down for I'm down <laughs> to back it up. It um, is the right. win. All right. I think we got to vote in. That's... That's the way the cookie crumbles. Super, That's the cookie crumbles like that. Soup <laughs> Mom 1. Soup Mom 1. <laughs> I can't believe it. Super Mom had the best game direction. I I mean, there, it's not going to win it. But <laughs> if it did, that would be amazing. <laughs> game of the year. Right, here, it is. here it is. All right, friends. I wonder what, what you guys are going to choose. <laughs> oh, I wonder. I wonder. Wait, actually, Eli might still go with Baldur's Gate. 
I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting question. I'm gonna vote for uh, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Oh let's go. yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. End the video. Let's go. No, I I am gonna vote Baldur's Gate three. I'm voting Baldur's Gate. I three. really I really like Alan Wake two a lot. I think it's such a good game. I think Baldur's Gate three is one of the best games ever made, though. I really do. I think it's just incredible it the is. actual like scope and depth of what they they did is just nuts mm -hmm. the amount of like polish and like really it's just the fact that you're playing a crpg but everything looks so beautiful and all of the like text and everything is fully voice acted like the whole time mm -hmm. the narrator's talking to you mm -hmm. everything is gorgeous the mm -hmm. presentation when you go into any conversation with anyone it just looks good it feels good. The writing is on point. It's it's such a good game. It is my game of the year, Baldur's Gate. I concur with the sentiment very heavily. Very, very heavily. I think, okay, here's the thing. I've played a lot of CRPGs before, right? I've played a lot of games where you have a lot of quote-unquote player choice. Persona 5 used to be one of my bigger examples where I was like, oh, you can do so much stuff in Persona 5. But if we're going to be entirely honest, the game is still extremely linear, right? This is the first time I've really played a game where I genuinely feel like my actions have changed the story drastically. Well, okay, this is the second time I felt that. The first time I actually felt that was with uh, Eli, do you remember your uh, Pathfinder? Oh, yeah, Rather Righteous. That game, that game made me feel like I changed a fuck ton of shit. But even then, while it did feel very monumental, it felt like there's a lot of stuff going on. It was a very, you know, expansive game, and it was very world-changing. And while Baldur's Gate 3 is a big game, it felt more personal. It felt like I was actually doing something. And it felt like I was doing something with a bunch of people that I actually grew to really, really enjoy in a really short period of time. So far, of like, whenever I'm playing a game, there's always one or two characters where I'm like, I could care less about, right? Like, especially with the main cast. Like, with um, uh, with Pathfinder, I didn't care too much about um the. Don't you, know, you dare like, say Rachel. Rachel's great. Rachel's the fantastic dude. What are you talking right, about? He's my favorite companion in any ever RPG ever. He's he's well, literally Parker. just yeah. Dude, Regal Durang is th the fucking goat to me. He is so fucking based. The I most love him evil, to death. lawful mm. little gnome you ever met. You know what's fantastic? He's evil, but he's like, he's, you can actually turn, you like, he can still stays evil, but he will totally stick with you if you're a good character, but you're effective. And that's what he is. It's all about efficacy for him. So that's fantastic. The point is, though, um, while that game is great, there were still some compa companions and some characters who I was like, I could care less about. I couldn't care about them. Every character I've encountered in Baldur's Gate 3, even the evil people, I liked. I loved. Some of them were assholes or evil, but I liked them anyway. And I can't really think of a specific character who who's like major actually or listen when I say major, a character who actually does something in the story. Like, you know, there are NPCs who will say like standard shenanigans like oh we're just trying to get to baldur's gate that's fine but all those characters i really enjoyed and all the minor characters i really enjoyed and even the children who usually are written really really terribly in a lot of games i was totally cool with and i enjoyed interacting with them because they were well written and they didn't make me want to claw my eyes out which is a pretty big thing <laughs> so <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 is my game of the year because I love how responsive it is to you as a player. And I don't think I've played a game like that ever in my entire life, frankly. And just to, like, stack out of that, you talk about, like, how freedom it is and, like, how, you know, I, I always do the evil thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the, the like, even the kids are interesting, but also you can, like kill the kid and pick up its body <laughs> and throw it at your buddy in co-op and have a dead kid fight just throwing a dead child back and forth at each other Remember? which i have done and it is incredibly fun <laughs> and which game here lets you throw dead children like a bat like a fucking football i don't know i don't know <laughs> so yes these are these are this is the strong mario. endorsement of ball <laughs> can you kill children in mario <laughs> 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 can you kill children in Mario game? 
You can throw a Joy-Con. Hey, wait, where's Wario? Where move it? Game of the year? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. What are your guys' opinions? Should Resident Evil be here, really? No. Well, it's no. a remake of one of the best games ever. I don't. I yeah. I don't know. People. People. I really I seriously it? feel like Alan Wake should have just taken the spot of Resident Evil. I don't feel like they both need to be up there. I feel like Alan Wake's is just miles yeah. ahead of Resident Evil Four. Hey, Eli, you played Resident Evil Four? I did. Yeah, I I've played both of them, and I like Alan Wake so much more. <laughs> See, I think if I had played every game on this list, I would like Alan Wake 2 the most personally, but I think I Baldur's Gate that. 3 is going to win, and then I also think it probably deserves it more. Mm. Because, like, yeah. just like the fact that at the beginning of this year, I don't remember anybody talking about Baldur's Gate 3, and it was like, yeah. it was the only thing I heard about Baldur's Gate 3 is like, oh, it's a it's what PlayStation people can play when Starfield comes out. <laughs> and, like, the fact that it's overshadowed Starfield to such a significant degree, where it's, like, even Zelda is probably... Zelda, which was assumed to have Game of the Year in the bag, is not going to anymore. It's, yeah. like, crazy. I also, like, I, I didn't even really think about this, but me and Dev are probably pretty biased. I think we were both early Access players for, like, sure. like a long <laughs> time before Baldur's Gate 3 even came out. So we definitely sure. were to the crowd of people yeah. who hadn't I mean, heard of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know it's anecdotal, but like, I swear, nobody gave a shit about this game. No, I definitely no, more like a, earlier this yeah, year. Absolutely, the marketing, the marketing shit that they did. Literally announced at a stadium event. Insane. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the funniest thing too, because I think you are right. I think people were initially saying that it was going to be like a toss up between Baldur's Gate and Starfield, and it would be like, which game is it going to be? Which game is going to be game of the year? And then Starfield got crushed. By Baldur's Gate 3. So much to the point where people are trying to review, like, Starfield, where, like, we didn't want to do this, but we have to compare it to Baldur's Gate 3 because it's marketing itself as an RPG. And if you look at what Baldur's Gate 3 did versus what Starfield did, uh, so, like, (laughs) I have to agree. I have to agree. Um, I think, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 managed to claw itself out from, essentially, the Earth. No one knew about it for the longest time. And then it got announced, and then it launched, and it dropped, and took over frankly, the world. took over the world. I also have to, I also say, I do want to vote for it as game of the year because of what the studio is doing as well. Um, I think they... if Stadia were still around, Baldur's Gate three would have saved Stadia. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it's probably. If yeah. it was like a real exclusive, no, I think people just wouldn't have played it, and it would have gotten lost. To be honest, oh, no, and that would have been. That, that would have been tragic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll be posting these Stadia Connect videos from time to time to bring you the latest from Google straight to all of you, the players. So let's get started. And we're just getting started. This worldwide exclusive unveil comes straight from our friends at Larian Studios. Well, it was only like exclusive streaming to Stadia, wasn't it? Like, oh, it wasn't God, like the game know. could only be played on Stadia. I don't think. It was going to be PC and Stadia exclusive, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Oh, PC. like it wasn't going to be on console? Hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't think so. I think it was like at least timed. It was going to mm-hmm. be, yeah. Well, fellas, shall we vote for the choice? I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, Mario Wonder? Soup Mom <laughs> Wonder. Soup Mom. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Everybody knew it. Now, do you <laughs> think it'll happen? I think it'll happen. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. so. There's just too much around it at this point. Mm-hmm. I like. I won't be sad if Alan Wake somehow pulls it, because I think it's also an incredible game. Mm-hmm. But I think Baldur's Gate Three's pretty much got it. But we'll be mm-hmm. sad if it's any of the other four. <laughs> is what you're saying? I mean, like well, Resident Evil Four just really like, shouldn't even be there, in my opinion. Tears of the Kingdom, like I didn't play. It's definitely a serious contender, though. Yeah, I don't I really mean, think Super Mario Bros. is a serious contender. No, I don't think <laughs> so. I'm being honest. I don't mm-hmm. think so. Yeah. I've played Tears of the Kingdom. I, it's a really fantastic game, and I could totally see if... Well, I mean, it, it would be interesting to see that one win, because I feel like it doesn't have nearly as wide of an audience as Baldur's Gate 3. It, like, and I feel like the only reason why Tears of the Kingdom doesn't have wait, as wait, wide wait, of an wait, audience... Wait, 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 wait. Hmm? The Legend of Zelda does not have as wide an audience of... As let me Baldur's explain. Let, let I think Baldur's Gate 3 let, let sold way less than Tears of the Kingdom. 
But I think the problem becomes, I mean, like, I guess a lot of people have Switches nowadays, but the fact that Legend of Zelda is only on the Switch and there isn't really on any other console, like, because it's a Nintendo-specific ex- game and it's not accessible uh, to a whole bunch of I, I think you're you're a little bit hazed by your PC. I am. Yeah, I think you're off, Devin. <laughs> Yeah, there are not a lot of people who can afford a gaming PC. There's a lot of people who can afford like a two fifty dollar Switch Lite or whatever. You know what? Two hundred dollars. That's kind of the whole point of consoles. Is like that's how like the masses can actually afford the ability to play these games. All right, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. (laughs) (laughs) Mario, I think Mario is going to outsell Baldur's Gate three also. Oh really? I guess I could believe it too. That's a Switch game. Most definitely, yeah. Do people have Switches? I think Spider Man's gonna. I think Spider Man's gonna outsell switches. Baldur's Gate three also. Yeah, I can believe it. Nintendo just released like a graphic in their in their sales meeting or something that was like, every new entry we've had for any of our franchises has outsold all of the previous ones by like more than double. Oh, <laughs> the Switch. Everybody has a Switch. It's like if you play video games, you have a Switch is like the first. You know, it's like the entry level. Everyone has really. It. Yeah. What is it? Yes. What the? What? And then Mario is the most recognizable yeah. character in the world. I mean, again, like, like right. Switch is the only way to play basically yes, all Nintendo exactly. games. So they have like a huge incentive to get it. Plus, it's like half the price yeah. of the yeah. other consoles that are already like the cheapest option for people. Oh, boy. like again, like a PC is like, like probably minimum a thousand bucks to like you know play like a decent game like one of the yeah, like consoles is like 500 bucks that's like yeah, and i believe those are like typically sold at a loss Oof. by the company just so they get yeah. some more games and that's like how you get like accessible or like new games accessible to people these consoles okay. and then like the cheapest one of those that is also the only way you can play nintendo games is the switch it's kind of like this perfect storm so i'm like i've thought about I, getting a switch many times i get you i get okay so people do have switches they do yeah that's so weird. It's so strange. It's such a <laughs> Not <weird> really. <laughs> Too weird to me. I get it. Play the game. The game PCs are very expensive, and they're 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 expensive, and and they're 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 you gotta invest in them. You gotta invest in them. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I get it. Kids. But- Kids aren't playing Baldur's Gate. Oh, no, you're right. <laughs> no, Baldur's, Gate, Baldur's 3. Gate three is supposed to come to Xbox later this year still, and this should run on the Series S. Oh. It's three hundred dollars, so it's like. Oh, there you go. That's that's like the low end, so maybe more people will play it then. But yeah. That's a fair point. I guess that's fair. Well then, hey, console gaming—that's the way to go for for folks. Shit, I was wrong. All right, we did it. <laughs> I mean, it was like the <laughs> only way for me to do it. Like most of high school, there. Yeah. That's a good point. I think we're just I, yeah, like for a lot of people, like the consoles, just like yeah, yeah the, the best way. You're not wrong. I do actually remember playing on the Xbox 360 a whole bunch back in my high school days. I had a Wii. So, friends, what okay. is what is the moral of this video? What have we learned? What are we taking away with ourselves today? What is, what is it that we've learned? Yeah, we we should play more video games. <laughs> so <laughs> was, like, didn't I wish, play anything. I wish I could play like, a bunch things. of these instead of like Final Fantasy mobile games. But I gotta play High Five Rush and Pizza Tower and stuff. You need, yeah, no, you really should play High Five At the very least. <laughs> you should play right. Alan yeah. Wake, too. Sure well, but then I gotta oh, yeah, play Alan Wake, play but it. I gotta play Alan Wake 1, and then I get it. You so. also you should play Baldur's Gate, Tom. You should do it. I don't have do time it. for that. I don't got time for that. What do you mean no, you don't got, have time for Baldur's Because he's gonna play Final Fantasy or he'll die. Oh, February 29th, and I'll be free of the Final Fantasy. Are you Wait, sure how are you gonna play Final Fantasy 16 by then? Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that not a Final Fantasy title? Won't you expire? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh, you're gonna die. <laughs> Wait. No. I did no the way. math and I saw that if I keep releasing the videos at the pace that I'm releasing, <laughs> I will die. <laughs> So someone's gonna have to. Uh, someone's gonna have to figure that out. We're gonna have to figure that out. But uh, uh, someone's gonna have to figure that out. 
Oh, can, you, can, you, can you get on that real quick? I'm fucking dying, bro. I, I mean, this. I could convince Square Enix to, de to delay the game again. Yeah, yeah. That'd be really helpful. <laughs> Just delay that. Hey, hold, on, hold on, Tom. I got, I got your out. I got your out. Are you ready? Yeah. You changed the deadline for Rebirth releasing on Xbox. Oh. Well, that could... <laughs> But then that's like too much. It could be a year. Like I'll be done. I'll be long done. Oh, that that'll be like a decade, Tom. You're good. <laughs> well, well, you know, you know, Tom. You could also just keep on reviewing them at the space that you're reviewing them, and then you don't have to worry about dying things. Really but I do have to worry about it because it's happening. okay. Well, well, what if you did just die? Well, a lot of people would be sad. I would be sad. <laughs> I would be sad too. <laughs> no, you would be dead, Tom. It's a different. Now hold on, Tom. My question becomes: If you you don't have to like play Final Fantasy 16 before and and finish it before Rebirth releases, right? Yeah. What do you, you mean? Of course I do. Yeah, he does. <laughs> or he dies. Didn't you say that or about 16 before? Like you were like, I gotta play all these games before 16 released, and then 16 released, and then you're like, well, shit. No, that was just I was. It was originally going to be when sixteen came out, but mm -hmm. I decided before I even revealed the, the deadline that I would instead go with Rebirth, which was what the if right you went for Kingdom Hearts four? It's not fun. Again, it'll be so easy. And it's also it's not a Five Fantasy game. <laughs> it's a Kingdom Hearts game, dude. There is cloud. He's not even. In I three. mean, wouldn't the most sense be to just say like you're going until fucking whatever seven three is gonna be is? Yeah, but that's five years away. Like, there's no, there's no tension. There's no. <laughs> there's no tension. Okay, well, what if, too much tension. Well, what if I started? What if I started developing a Final Fantasy game and it was gonna be done in two years and, um, or would one year be better? I think I can get this d all done in like four months, but I have three months. That's what I'm saying right now. Okay, what if I develop the Final Fantasy game that's going to release in four months? How does that sound? That'd be good. Yeah. What you so could do is, just, like, I, I mean, this would kind of suck, but you put 14 on hold for a little while. <laughs> yeah, I already said yeah, that. Wait, that was, spend all your time good, right? I mean, I've what? invested like 150 hours into it. Oh wow! So yeah, lot, if yeah. hypothetically I put all those hours into the other games, then yeah. Yeah, so maybe maybe you pause Final Fantasy XIV because Final Fantasy XIV in itself is just a bunch of shit that you really can kind of get into. You could you can push it to the release of Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail. That could do well. Well, isn't I'm, that doing gonna that, be next? I'm doing that for the fourteen stuff. Basically, like I'll I'll get the fourteen stuff done by Dawn Trail, but everything else done by Rebirth. Gotcha, gotcha. So fourteen and the rest of the Final Fantasy games have different deadlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That actually is very sage and makes a lot of sense. Friends, thank you so <laughs> much for reviewing the video games with us. I feel like my brain grew. It was a good time. That was fun. Yeah. Um, I think that the worst game is Starfield. I uh, agree. It seemed to, like how many not. nominations did it get? Like one, maybe it was two. One, yeah, yeah, it was only just one, one, and we vetoed it. <laughs> it, was, it was RPG <laughs> best role playing game, and there was no way it was going to be a good role playing game in Wish Shaper Four. We vetoed that one. Oh, what, no. What will yep. you do if it wins that category? I will be upset because there's. there's I will. <laughs> I will make an X account just so that I can X angrily at Jeff Keeley. <laughs> I concur with the sentiment. I'll send him several strongly worded X's. Excuse me, sir. Why the fuck did you do this to me <laughs> and my son? My family is dead because of you. I'm going to sue you. That's what I'm going to type to him if I get if he. I'm going to tell him my name is uh, Bill Clinton. I'm an Orthodox reform oh, rabbi. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, do you think that that's, oh, that's a real prediction. Do you think anything like that's going to happen? Oh, yes, he's definitely going to get Bill Clinton again. It's happened twice already. It's going to happen a third time. <laughs> Wait, it happened twice? What, what did the yeah. second time happen? At, uh, he was hosting, Summer what Games was Fest. it? Gamescom? Summer, Summer Games Fest. Fest. Summer Games oh. Fest. And then what happened? Who came on stage and told them that Bill Clinton would become a rabbi? 
a different guy, just a different. It's just just a different guy, yeah. But and like, it, like this thing is getting Bill Clinton now, so like, yeah, it's a trend now. Why? Still well, two good. is a pattern. You know, one's an event, two is a pattern. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they say, "Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me." Someone is going to pick up the mantle for oh, for God. this game awards. A hundred percent, they have to. I thought it was like one was an event, two is a coincidence. Wait, it could be me. I live here. No, Gabe, don't. Yeah. Bill, Bill Clinton, Clinton, Jeff Keeley, bro. Be a I legend. could do it. I just have to walk in there and do it. Gabe, Tommy, you better not be recording anymore. This is this is evidence no. now. <laughs>